Hey, how are we doing? Good evening to everybody. Um, I've been a really busy man today. I've done a lot. Hang on. Sorry, folks. I've got a window open, and I'm sure you're hearing double right now. I am sorry. It's one of the biggest mistakes I see most everybody make on YouTube is leaving the YouTube window sound on and having everything else set up. So hopefully everybody can hear me. That should have fixed any issues if you did hear a doubling of sound. Uh, because the mic picks up everything. Hang on just a second here. I just got an update from a family member. Okay. Okay, so we all know that eBay doesn't have a permanent... Let me make sure the camera is. I think we're straight there. Doesn't have a permanent... Let me just make sure you can hear me before I go farther. Um, if everybody can hear me, just give me a shout out. Um... Hang on just a second here. I got some questions already, which I will address. Um, Jan Zap, I'll get to you in just a few minutes here. Hey, Duncan Hauptman, I am working on uh, your issue. Um, uh, somebody that I saw part of the comments on there, if that didn't solve anything, just hit me back up on, on that or post another thing on, on this one after the show, and I'll come back in and check it out again for you. Um, I've been digging into a lot of other issues. I spent two hours plus reading articles on the CEOs resigning, what caused it, where it came from. Um, and I, in fact, I even copied some of it to my phone just so I know um, the particulars. And we've been going back and forth with some other people. I went to college, and I, again, this has nothing to do with bragging. I worked in corporate America. I know some of the structure. I was a regional for a tri-state area. I handled three states. For a national company, and you know, I took business uh, classes in college, and I, you know, project management, and all that kind of stuff. So, I do have a, a good understanding on how the whole process works and all this. In fact, let's just talk about that real quick now, and just get it out of the way, because I had a lot of people comment and say things after the resign. Now, I'm we're just going to call him CEO. I'm not going to bash anybody's name. I'm not a big name dropper, as everybody should know. Uh, the CEO of said company, eBay, well, his initiative. Now, his termination, re forced resign, you can call it. Um, he had no choice if if you don't get the, the gist on that. The board is in control, you know, so he doesn't have a say. He did drop off the board, too, which is even worse than just resigning because it means he's totally severed his connections with the company. Fine, you know, he was steering it in the wrong direction, in my opinion. My video chat last week on Friday with eBay, I addressed his comments personally and stated uh, what many of you have said too. So um, they were aware of it. I, I, I wish to God I could have recorded that conversation, but I didn't want to do any legal issues and have somebody come back and say I recorded a private conversation with corporate America. But um, it was all telling on who was there in the whole works. No criticism towards the people that I talked with. They were very professional. I believe they were very honest. They're not the final word. They were doing what, what you know their job is. So no criticism towards any of the folks that I personally talked to in any way, shape, or form. Um, the, the, the biggest aspect, and I, I hate to even bring this back up because I took a lot of hate on this, but there was no IT people in that room that I could see whatsoever. There was none on the phone as well because it was a big joint thing with several people in different areas of the country, apparently, in different rooms or different buildings. I'm not sure where they were all at. didn't matter. And it, uh, at the end, too, I found out afterwards somebody else hollered in via a phone, which didn't even show up as t uh, on the on the chat, but... That was an issue I brought up was the CEO. I, I literally repeated word for word, I had it down, what he said in the, the Wall Street Journal. If you want to know what's going on in eBay or going on with this specific thing here, look at the Wall Street Journal or Forbes. Those are the two best ones that are going to give you the most information. If you look on in, uh, routers or routers, whatever you want to call it, um, any of the other boards that I see, or in CNN, Fox, whoever you're watching, they're going to give you the basics, but they're not going to break down any of the, the technical things. Forbes looks for the answers in Wall Street Journal. I don't care what people think of them. They, they do do very good investigations on financial stuff, no matter what, because that's their business. All the financial gurus read those for that reason. I've read and, and have a subscription to Wall Street Journal and have had for many years since I took college because for a college class, we needed it. So, you know, it's not like I'm some big guru on financials and stuff, but I do know how it all works. I handled a $11 million uh, region and, you know, I, I had to candle every dime of that. So I, I know how a lot of this stuff works. The whole aspect with the CEO resigning is his steering uh, and his 
what did they say? Let, let me let me open up my phone here because there was um, talk on specifics here. Um, and I, I was talking with many other people, so it's not just like I come to any conclusion here. Um, and I'm not trying to insinuate in any way, shape, or form it had anything to do with anything I did. But the basis of the uh, Forbes and Wall Street Journal article, again, go read them yourself. There's now three or four, so you might have to read four or five just to get the exact comments I'm making here, but they are out there. This this gentleman is an operations guy. He came from Reuters, the news news agency. He had no technical. He was in charge of running the operation. So he is literally an operations guy. I'm an operations guy, but I know the technical side of it because I did take IT classes. So for me, I want to know it all, whatever it can to help my business. And if you see my stuff, you know my business has, has risen quite drastically. So... Um, but again, he's not an innovator, and it literally said that word for word in the article. So his idea of steering the company, and again, I'm taking this from articles. I did not come to this conclusion. This is literally from Wall Street Journal and Forbes. You can look at them online. There's many articles on there about this exact thing. You might want it to, if you really want to dig into this, go back to January when he made the initial statement saying that he was going to steer the company in a direction that would target you and I as the sellers for more revenue instead of increasing the revenue base. Let's go back one more step too, just so you understand what happened and what the end of the year was for eBay. They sold less items across the entire site. They made less revenue from less items selling than they did the year before. But they still made a big profit of 90 some odd million dollars off of our backs. And that's literally what I brought up in the chat with um, uh, geez, uh, I can't think. I think it was development um, services as well as the promoted listing. The person who actually runs the promoted listing department was in there in the room. Um, this is CEO's um, idea. This is what he wanted. He wa wanted to and did cut off third-party apps coming in or third-party advertising. Um, and they cleared the space. So if you noticed what it was last month, you'd see ads for things that weren't eBay related from people that had nothing to do with eBay. A lot of those were removed. And then they pumped stuff out intending to get the made up the revenue from promoted listings. So obviously we know they did make more money. The last, I think it was quarter two, they made 130 percent more in promoted listing fees than they did from the, the prior one. So that means that they were pushing and marketing promoted listings as their way and source of revenue. Fact, you can look it up. These were initiatives by the CEO of the company. I did take business accounting. You know, I, I know how the stock market works. I know how board of directors are set up. I did read into the uh, specifics on, you know, one of the board of directors owns 5% and they were pushing heavy. There's a restructuring and they're selling off like um, StubHub and things like this. That, that's that been news for like, I don't know, 10 months or so. I, I want to say the last, it started in December. So again, eBay owns some companies. They've owned PayPal in the past. The board was... was um, you know, promise things that would happen. And this, I can't say specifics because this is just how corporate America works. CEO promises the board, the board pushes it out, they try to raise the stocks. eBay split off from PayPal, and this is when this started. He took over right after this happened and helmed eBay from that point on. So what's been going on is his directions with eBay. Even though he's an operations guy and not a innovator. Literally, that's what the article said in Wall Street Journal and Forbes. So he steered it this way. Look at the financials. Again, everybody's not going to care about stock market or anything. But if you sell on the platform, you should care about this aspect, if nothing else. And it, even just the aspect of what's gone on with the company. Look at what eBay stock is, is going for and look at what PayPal stock is going for. Don't forget, eBay owned PayPal. Now, if you look at PayPal, it's, I think, 200 and some odd percent up. eBay's like 30 percent up eBay's down here. PayPal is way up here in uh, turnover revenue and, you know, profits. So eBay has been steady. They have not had a growth since the PayPal split. And again, look into this. You know, you'll see what I'm talking about if you like looking at figures and numbers. So I dug into this and I've watched this for quite some time. It d doesn't bother me because end of the day, eBay is going to keep going. It's a viable company. There's too much money involved for, you know, whether, you know, it goes under, which I really don't think, whether it will get purchased, which I really don't think. I think they're going to put somebody in here and spend more money on a on a new CEO that's going to have some tech abilities. If I had to guess, 
I would bet, and I'm not trying to be smart or say I'm better than anybody else, I would guess that maybe the CEO might not have understood even how they worked promoted listings in the first place or even any of these ads. They base their, their revenue in the future on advancing the company, not on bringing new people in, bringing young folks into the site and increasing actual item selling. And I, again, brought this up word for word. I'm not misquoting. eBay was there. They can, they can say I'm lying, but that's not going to happen because that's literally what was discussed in the conversation. I said these comments to a dead room. Nobody, nobody raised a head. In fact, several heads were looking down when I said some of these comments. You know, take it for what you will, but I, I 100%, you know, hand to God, I should say, that's exactly what happened in the conversation in there. I let them, I let my, let my mind go out and I didn't care. You know, I figured I'm being honest. I'm being sincere. They wanted to know what's going to fix it. I voiced an opinion of stuff that I've heard from since day one coming on YouTube. I brought up Amazon coming in after them in, in stuff like that. I brought up, you know, competition and I was brought back to 2008 for whatever reason they wanted to discuss that issue. To me, past isn't isn't important. It's where it's going and what's going on. The whole initiative of the CEO was to pr push promoted listings. And again, if you don't know this, they were going to add pay-per-clicks. They still may. This may be. They, they told me specifically beta rolls out at the end of the year. So pay-per-clicks is going to be a thing here that's going to be marketing to the folks here, which means a pay-per-click means that you won't, um, they won't have to worry about the items selling to still make money off of those ads. I'm not trying to say they're doing anything wrong. Again, that's, that's not a bad thing for a business. You or I may think differently, but as a business decision, I probably would have looked into that same decision because it means revenue comes in all the time instead of just sparsely coming in when you sell something. If people are jumping on the site and not having good items, those items aren't going to sell. Hence, eBay's not going to make a profit off of it. So, you know, he batted everything on this. Uh, you know, I literally shouted out that, hey, you're not looking for young people. My kids don't even touch your site other than, you know, listing on it or something. But, you know, that that's a huge thing for me. I at the end of the conversation with eBay and again, it was heads of departments. It wasn't some it wasn't concierge. It wasn't um, any of that kind of stuff. A telephone. This was a video chat one to one with several groups of people in different areas. You know, heads of these these departments that, that probably didn't want to be sitting there listening to me go off. So. You know, and I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to put myself in any spot or anything else. This is just the facts that happened. So, you know, I wanted to see some reactions. I wanted to know where their head was at. And, of course, they I didn't think they'd respond because you just can't do that as a, you know, employee of the company. The board didn't see his direction of where it's going. Again, go to Forbes, go to Wall Street Journal. These are not exact quotes, but it's paraphrasing what was written down on multiple articles. Again, word for word, I read these. I spent two hours reading articles. Weekly, I always check financials and stuff anyway. You know, that's just what I do. That's I want to make sure that the foundation of my business is stable. If you don't do that, I would recommend it if you got a lot of money involved in selling online platforms. Know where that platform is heading. Know if they're making a profit. You know, just know what their numbers are because, again, it's like ha you working inside of a building but not knowing if the floor is stable. That's how I would take it. And, and I've done this forever. And in, in business classes, you're going to be told to do stuff like this. So I've done it since college days, even before that, because, you know, I worked Lou. If you don't know who Lou, I've talked about him before. We're going to talk about this for a few more minutes and then we're done with it for the rest of the show. Just I don't want to be boring everybody, but I found this all quite interesting. The board had a whole different idea with selling off and things like that. His initiatives, again, were to dump Revenue coming in to the site from third parties and stuff, which would be like um, some kind of like a, a video game system wanting to advertise on the side or an insurance company advertising on the side. And again, they're going to flood those with their own, not flood, but they're going to put their own on there. And then promoted listings would take up the slack. So that means that they were weighing heavy on the seller side. Us as the seller, we're paying more and more. And even if you're looking right now, Go in and look at your percentages, your recommended promoted listing percentages. And again, I'm not telling anybody to do anything on that. You do what you want on that. I'm never going to touch them again unless something drastically changes because my sales have still skyrocketed. I know we're going into fourth quarter, but I can judge my sales for the last seven or eight years. So I know where I should be, and it's pretty much almost clockwork. So I'm 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 not going to worry about that at that point, but but his initiatives weren't doing so good, you know, as an overall aspect. You can't keep drawing from sellers. At a point, you're going to hit a point where they're either not going to do it 
or it's going to be flooded as well, and then it's not going to accomplish the needed fact. So that's not really looking for the, the future. That's plugging holes in a dam is what I would say, because if you're not bringing new people onto the site, attrition alone is going to lower the amount of people on any site. Attrition, meaning dies off or drops off the site. If you don't bring more people in there, you're not going to be able to sustain that. Eventually, the your, your line is going to go down. So I'm not going to spout out specific financial numbers and figures because I don't want to be going off on tangents here. But I, again, I spent a lot of time on this. If you just walked in, it's we're talking about the Wall Street Journal and Forbes. Those are the best ones to read on what, what happened with eBay. So they weren't happy with his initiatives. I, I could see it coming with that type of mentality. Again, they didn't just change promoted listings from what I see. They changed the entire structure. Now there may only be five, one, or no promoted listings on a specific page. So the competition is going to be raised. And I've been sent trending suggested percentage numbers from a, a many, a large group of people, probably 30, maybe 40 of all sent me stuff like that. I've looked into this too. Even percentages for postcards are like a 10 and 15% recommended for promoted listing. One of them I looked up was a Hopi postcard. I just typed in Hopi postcards. So if you want to follow this and do it on your own, you're welcome to. And I have one. So I looked. It recommended I marketed at 10% or it was 10.5% for a promoted listing to get a sale out of it. If you look at what was up, there weren't another one up that was promoted. All the sold ones were sold straight out. There was no basis to say it on. There's no other Hopi postcards to say. So where are those numbers coming from is my worry on it. Um, you know, and this is, everyone I looked was that way. If you went back last month, they were 3 5 or 6%. They've almost doubled. Another thing a lot of people aren't aware of is the promoted listing program is not available to everybody. So we're looking at it now, and it's, and it's I know it's been around for three years, but it's still young for the promoted listings program in general. What do you think is going to happen when everybody can do promoted listings? You know, it's, it's going to turn it in, in my opinion, these are opinions right here, the majority of this, though, comes from the Wall Street Journal's comments and articles from people they talk to in Forbes. Those of you who sell on Amazon, you know there's a large group of people that think racing to the bottom is the issue. I'm going to be able to sell it if I lower it a little more. I'll sell it if I lower it a little more. And what happens is they're constantly lowering themselves down the ladder to the bottom, race to the bottom. I'm not a race to the bottom person. If I'm on Amazon and I'm selling something... I don't need to sell it today. I don't need to sell it tomorrow. I don't need to sell it next month. As long as it's going to sell at some point, I'm fine with the storage fees because it's really nothing for a lot of the items. The other folks will sit there and price themselves down as they go down the ladder. And I'll wait till they sell out of their items at their low price. And then I'll sell mine at the same price I had it originally. I don't care if I had to wait. Most of thy stuff, even if it's wholesale, um, RA will sit there in some cases. It will sell, though, at a price that I'm fine with. So... You know, I'm not looking for that for eBay to be that. If everybody on the planet can do a promoted listings, and it's it's just going to be the same thing, but with with promoted listings now. If there weren't promoted listings, we'd all be at the same place as to where we're going to show up. Everybody would have the same chance with promoted listings, and everybody having an option. Everybody could be promoting something, and then you're flooding it. How are you going to get a sale when everybody can do the same thing? One percent's not going to work. Two percent's not going to work. And on top of that, they could promote you on page 50 at the top. They could promote you at page 20 at the bottom of the page. What's going to be relevant? What's going to be good for you? There's no explanation for that. Um, so, you know, in my book, I think a few of those folks in the board and, you know, in in his realm of people may not even have known that Adblocker blocked some of these. And, and it not even related to me. They, they knew eBay had to 100% know that Adblocker blocked these since... Three years ago, um, I think you blocks the other one that blocked them the first week they put them out. You know, again, I have an IT degree and I also have one in database design and development. I built databases in college and I built them off college for a little while as well. So I'm not spewing false facts. I'm just spewing, you know, what I personally learned in college. You want to go talk to my professors in the books that wrote them and say that's wrong. Be my guest. You're not going to go anywhere with that. You know, I took uh, CSS, JavaScript, HTML, um, Java, um, uh, Visual Basics, and C+. I may be missing one as well, too. PHP I covered, too. So I, I know how the technology works. And, you know, maybe they don't know it. I, I was just dumbfounded at some of the, the comments that were levied in the room. I pushed the fact of ranking on, on Google, and one of the, the persons says, well, what does that matter? 
And I literally repeated and explained that a lot of my sales come off from the site. I had to explain this, and I was just dumbfounded. And, and uh, at the end of the conversation, the fact that I had to explain that really bugged me. That that I they should have known. Everybody in that room should have known that aspect. Again, they're, they're these are PR people I talk to and business professionals, not necessarily people who who understand selling. I, I doubt these people sold. Maybe maybe the one gentleman did, the one that was there for 20 years. So I'm not going to say he didn't, but I doubt the other two two in the one room did. You know, you would be dumbfounded. And I had to explain that you guys on your own site can offer information on where these sales come from. I, I shouldn't, again, had to say that in the conversation. That should have never been something I should have had spoken out of my own mouth. You know, it, it's just not something I should say. You know, and it looks like they added in that 2% clause they're, they're claiming, the PR statement. Again, it says um, suggested. Suggested does not mean fact. I can suggest the world is flat. That doesn't mean the world is flat. You know, suggestion means nothing, you know, whatsoever. So I'm just going to get that out there one more time. So the whole aspect of just gaining profits on a company from a, a selling field that is continually dropping in some aspects because there's so many other platforms out there makes no sense. You know, and as well, who's going to want to, the whole aspect was crazy in my book, you know, and I've said it for a while, that, that the, the aspect to raise the money from us, you know, the buyers, the ones that have to be on the site for them to work. Again, they don't have third-party sellers on the site, technically, like Amazon does. They don't compete with us. eBay doesn't sell the same things you sell, like Amazon does. Amazon sells many of the items that you sell, and they originally will get the buy box no matter what. You won't have that buy box option. That's what eBay was pushing, and that's what the CEO was pushing. We're not fighting you with the same challenges as you would have on Amazon. That was why. That's how he specifically was saying they were better than Amazon. Even though eBay has 6% of market share, Amazon has over 30% of market share. And eBay has been stuck in that same steady line of, you know, the same growth line. It's it's almost straight. It's almost flat all the way across. Even like with PayPal, as I said, PayPal's is, geez, pay, PayPal's is huge. We made a lot of money when PayPal went and, and it hasn't stopped from there. So look at the numbers. Again, I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of the numbers, but I'm telling you, the numbers speak for itself. So does, does the whole breakout of the ad blocker blocking have anything to do with it? I'm not going to say it has anything to do with him technically get fired, but it may have been the very last nail in the coffin when it got out to all the people that they were relying on for income, the sellers, found out that the ad blocker can block the one thing that he was betting on to increase sales for the company. Look at it yourself. It even mentions in the Wall Street Journal and in Forbes that he was banking on the promoted listings as well as the pay-per-click. That is a whole paragraph in there. And then the following paragraph says these initiatives were not going very well. So you expect a certain percentage. Quarter four, they were expecting a decline in sales from the projections from earlier this year from what I read. And again, Wall Street Journal, Forbes magazine, online. There's three or four articles on Forbes. There's four or five on Wall Street Journal. If you're a, a nut on numbers, figures, and stuff like that, go read them yourself. Again, these are these are factual. I read Wall Street Journal at least four or five times a week, no exaggeration, while I'm eating breakfast. It's just what I do. I eat at the computer. I eat. I have another computer running with a video editing or something, or I'm listing, or I've got some program running for something else, compiling, or whatever I may be doing. So I read all that stuff. I'm a nut on that. Anybody who watches my show knows that I, I'm, I've got major OCD on some things, and I go on about them for a while. Again, it's not an intentional thing. It's just me. I can't control that. That you know, I'm not going on medication or anything. And I have ADD, so once I get into it, I can't let go until that object is solved in my brain. So, uh, again, none of this was my intent to put anything out here. I actually was helping a a uh, subscriber in my Facebook group, believe it or not. And the post is still up there. So you, if you doubt what I'm saying, it's there as well to read. Um, but again, the, the whole structure of it was based on getting money from you, every one of you out there, the single moms that are you know trying to make ends meet, the, the single dads with two kids, you know, their wife passed. And, and I'm giving you true examples of people who've contacted me, showing me sales and figures and stuff that dropped in September. Now, you're going to have a bunch of people that say, yeah, they're doing fine. It depends on where you're at and what category you're selling in. I can tell you that because the minute I started to look into the folks that were seeing you know, steady sales, no issues with that from the promoted listings, were in categories that were huge and newer stuff and stuff that sells on every platform. 
the ones that we're seeing sales decreases were people like me that have you know niche markets and stuff like that for the most part i know there's going to be the exception here as well so and ebay has been getting many calls so it, it, and i say this about uh, for sure because i get people telling me they called ebay to have them check this to have them check back look at some of the video comments there's there's dozens and dozens on every video saying similar things about sales so ebay knows something's been going on they've been getting tons of calls about sales drops starting in in september 5th through the 8th the 8th is the one that several people show me more so than any other ones that on the 8th i can look at and, and if i had a transparency of their sales records I could set them on top of each other, and they were pretty much identical. Same day drop, same day drop, same day drop in multiple stores. Again, I thank those folks who did send me that. Again, I like numbers, and I can't gleam everything from my own numbers because they don't correspond with what's going on with everybody else. Um, I sell in specific categories. So, again, I don't want to waste too much more time on this, so I'm not going to go on about it too much more. But the promoted listings were part of his initiative. So, yes, the promoted listings as well as the pay-per-click were an initiative. They did do another survey. So there are going to be some some changes, in my opinion, from the surveys. Right after the, the survey came out, um, and again, I'm in the Experience eBay Expressions program, and I'm not going to say what the survey said, but one of the questions on there specifically related to where you get your information from. So take it for what you want on that. Hopefully you get the p picture on what I just stated there. Um, and there's a new survey out, too, that talks about third parties. This, I'm not speaking out of term because it was posted on e-commerce bytes. My video made it on e-commerce bytes, and it, it spread from there. So I've gotten a lot of contacts from financial people and things like that who contacted me after that article was posted. So I'm not speaking, you know, from lack of knowledge here at all. You know, people literally contacted me, and my mailbox was inundated with more stuff than I, I, I would care to see at one time. So... Again, and one other thing, too, I would never, ever recommend or ask anybody to speak up on my behalf. Do not badmouth other folks on my channel either. Um, again, whether they deserve it or not, I, I don't allow, even if it's somebody who's badmouthed me. So I have deleted another channel off my whole channel here because people were leaving nasty comments about them. And, and, and again, I, I, even if they badmouth me, uh, I'm not going to be like them and, and step down to that level. So end of story with that don't don't leave any nasty comments i screen everything on this channel i do delete comments if they're nasty or derogatory towards anybody i don't care what they were or what it is i try to catch them all maybe i missed one here and there but i doubt it again don't don't leave any nasty comments about anybody else i i try to keep it family friendly friendly as much as i can here my kids go out with me and we are a very tight family and i don't go out and badmouth people if you watch my flea market walk around video you can see how friendly i am with people and i joke around with a lot of people and that's me. I'm friendly. I don't care who you are. I don't. Doesn't matter to me at all. If you're nice to me, I'm going to be nice to you. If you're mean to me, I'm just going to ignore you and move on with my way and and not step down to to somebody else's level again. So, but let's uh, I guess end it with that. Um, good decision, bad decision. In my opinion, 100%. He needed to go like over a year ago. The minute he told everybody on on a Wall Street Journal interview for financials that he was going to get the more, uh, increase in revenue from us, that ended him for me, um, wanting him around at all. You know, point proven. You know, he's gone. He's gone for exactly what my opinion was, that he shouldn't bank on us. It should have been an equal take. Well, well, one more one more statement on here. If you don't know how this works, we're called stakeholders. The, the, the buyers are called stakeholders too. Stakeholders, anybody who has an invested interest in what's going on eBay is another stakeholder. That's the main stakeholders here. They were banking the whole company's standpoint point on and one third of their stakeholders without taking into account what it affects, you know, who it affects more and who it affects less. The other two stakeholders, eBay and the buyers, weren't touched at all, but all of us would see the, the loss of that. And again, as I said, everybody doesn't have promoted listings. When everybody has promoted listings, it's just going to be like before, but now you're just going to be giving away more money. In my book, again, my opinion... Take it as you wish. I'm allowed to have my opinion on that. My opinion is from educated information, from taking classes in college. We've went over the stock market in college. I've done all that kind of stuff. I've got accounting classes, several of them. I took several business management. I took risk management and project management classes. Project management classes and risk management classes are required for database design and development classes. wasn't my choice. I had to take them if I wanted my degree. So and that's literally why I have some of the classes that I did. I did take the the scripting classes and stuff like JavaScript on my own because I do do stuff and I would like to know how to 
write my own personal um, scripting and stuff, which I do have. I have some visual basic things just for me that no one else would have because I made them myself. So they do help my business in many ways. I do use PHP and other things like that. If you don't know what that is, just look up PHP and JavaScript if you care to. That's your decision. Um, a lot of you probably don't doesn't mean a thing to you, and it's no big deal. So, again, I'm not trying to be a jerk and speak about stuff. I talk like this all the time, so I'm not trying to talk up to anybody or down to anybody at all. This is me. If you watch my channel, you know this is me. I've been on here for a year and a half, and I've not changed how I talk about stuff. So, you know, I speak my mind. You don't like it. I'm sorry. Again, everybody's allowed their opinion on it. So, end of the day is... Obviously, anybody in their right mind would see that you don't bank all your bets on the people who sell your items. We sell all their items. We put their items up. eBay doesn't have any items for sale that are there. So you're hurting the one group of people. And on top of that, as it said, there was no concerted effort or even a plan to gain young people into the site. They, they did some stupid things, and I wished I would have written that part down, but they had some initiatives that went nowhere um, geez, I can't remember what they were. I wish I could remember. I don't want to dig through my phone, but there were initiatives trying to market the young crowd, and it was just such a ludicrous idea. It, it made no freaking sense. So that's why even Wall Street Journal and Forbes states that he had no innovation. His only thing was that he operated stuff. He knew how to run the business, which it's so much easier to run a business uh, because, again, he took in, it was just basically an auto uh, autopilot for some some aspect of it. The ones who are the best in any industry that you will work in, you, everybody out there, are people who innovate and, and know and, and look outside the box. Everybody says look outside the box, but you know only a certain group of people get that. And again, I'm not trying to insinuate anybody doesn't look outside the box here in my audience. Um, you wouldn't be here because I'm way off the norm for YouTubers on eBay, way, way off the norm. I'm not, I'm looking outside the box. I live outside the box. Let's just put it that way. Um, you know, I know I'm weird. I don't, you know, I don't think like everybody else, and I don't care about a lot of things. I don't care about flashing anything. Uh, I'll tell you how weird I am. I bought two more of these Elvis shirts in case this one wears out. I've got three of the identical same shirts because I love this shirt. So anyway, that's that's. I don't know anybody would do that, but that's me. I'm, I'm not so on certain things. Maybe ADD again or OCD or something. But uh, I love this shirt. You know, uh, second I saw it, I had to have it. So, you know, I'm not the norm. The people who you want running stuff, and I'm not saying me or anything, I'm just saying in general, you want an innovator. Um, Elon Musk is an innovator. He may be a little out there, but I'm fine with that. I get it because I'm way out there on some things and people think I'm nut nuts or if they'd see like our toy wall or something, they think, what the heck do you got so many of those toys for or, or things like that? Those are the people that I I like. Um, one of my favorites, favorite people um, to watch and who's who's way out of the box is Adam Savage. Um, I, I, he's one of the few that, you know, we're, we're going to end up taking a trip one of these days, um, bring some of our wares, the things we sell to, to like Dragon Con and stuff or Comic Con, just to hopefully see people like that there because those are the people that I look to uh, innovatively wise and stuff. So take it for what that is. Um, innovators are what, what eBay needs. If eBay picks somebody who did not come from the IT sector, my faith in them will be, be way, way down. They have to have an IT guy, somebody with running an IT company in my business. There, there's just there's just no no way around it because they're they're behind the ball at 6% market share versus Amazon's 30-plus market share. And as you know, Amazon wasn't any market share when eBay came out. eBay ran and ruled and started the whole market in the first place. I know there was Big Red Toy Box and Big Reel and all these other little companies that had collectibles and stuff, but eBay founded it. That I think that nobody can argue that at all in that aspect of it. So the innovator needs to be there. The folks who created eBay were innovators. They they saw the vision. Unfortunately, it, you know, things went in a different path. So, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. I will I personally will be worried if it's not somebody who ran an IT company. Per personal opinion. You know, but you know, my thinking on the direction of what's going on was was right on the whole promoted listings thing. They may not get rid of it. They may be rolled in and they're steeped on it. The only thing I can say is they did alter what it said on the policy and added that PR statement. And on top of adding the PR statement, um, oh, geez, I wrote that down. I probably won't be able to find where I wrote it down. I took a whole bunch of notes. Yeah, I don't remember where I was going with that. Sorry. My, my brain's been packed with stuff in here. So anyway, let, let's just cut that cough, uh, talk off on there. I kind of I think I made my point on there with rambling for 30 some odd minutes. I do apologize. Um, I was hit up by tons of people about that, so I, I just wanted to to speak my mind on that. Take 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 my words for whatever you wish. Um, 
that's my opinion, and it's an educated opinion. I read Wall Street Journal. A lot of my articles and even my percentages on who's using ad blocker came from Harvard and MIT. That's where my numbers come from. You can look them up yourself. All you want, you can look up any survey you want. The only ones that really matter, in my opinion, are ones that are educated with, you know, basis and you know, abstract information that states where the information comes from, how they came to that conclusion, what validates that conclusion, where's the baseline. Uh, again, I may be talking stuff that nobody cares to hear, but that's that's my mind. You know, take it as you wish. I think everybody who knows, again, this is me. I'm not putting on some show or some act. This is literally me. If you run into in in public, as some of you have now done, I've I've run into quite a few people lately. So, you know, I just just want to put that out there. I'm not altering my 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 um my thinking or anything. This is me all the time. You ask my wife, so or ask folks that meet me. I talk the same wherever I'm at. Well, thank you. Who is that? Who? Well, Donatella. Thank you very kindly for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Again, I do make some money off this channel from from folks like that. You know, I do put a ton of time into this. Um, it, it takes a lot of work, you know, and, and I, I check my facts. So, you know, I, I it's frustrating for somebody to say I'm not checking my facts when I had my facts straight from the start and I knew what I was talking about and proven that the facts were straight. And eBay even came out and admitted that they do block them. Their numbers are wrong. A suggestion is not a fact. So... You know, again, I, I can suggest that I can walk on water, but I, I can't walk on water. So the word suggested means nothing in a total, a figure, a number. You couldn't use that in a court of law. You couldn't use it in in uh, school. So, you know, let, let's just end it. I don't want to go on the rest of the show with that. I know I have some questions. Donatella, I, again, I honestly appreciate the four dollar or four ninety nine super chat. Again, thank you very kindly. Um, again, I'm not going to change um, my attitude or who I am for anything. Um, if I wanted to be bigger, I could have put up all the other BS and Worlds on Fire and all the other stuff um, like everybody else does. I could have brought in promotions from, from people that have hit me up to advertise their wares. I could have had a sponsor on the show probably six months ago. I have turned every single one of those down. You know, I don't get any more offers to go on other channels because most people, once they see that I don't do that very much, just, you know, get the, the response. I've turned almost every single channel down. Not only that, but uh, the channel that attacked me um, hit me up in December. Even though he says we never talk, that's not true at all. And um, that was the same month that my son, we found out. Not, not only the same month, it was right there two days after we found out about my son's heart issue. And that, that gentleman wanted me to come on, on their show and I couldn't give him an answer and... Um, I'm not going to go into more details, but that is a fact. I have copies of the email. And another person who recommended me to this person um, as well will probably substantiate what I just stated because I went back and, and messaged them months later when I figured out who that person was. So, again, I, I'm straightforward since the day I've been on the site. The, the person who did the hit video on me contacted me personally to go on his show. So, again, that is fact. So, if you watch his video, you hear him say many times that he's never chatted with me ever. Total lie. But, anyway, I'm not going to go on that again. I just don't want to be ranting the rest of the show. So, anyway, thank you very kindly there. Oh, and I got another one. Carolina Picks, well, well thank you very kindly there. I do appreciate the $5 super chat as well. Again, I, I, I try very, very hard to give you information I don't talk about stuff I don't know. So you don't see sports, you don't see clothing. I don't do very many video games. I, I do sell video games all the time, but that's not my area or my expertise. So take it for what you will. Everything that I show is legit and straightforward stuff. Just just a fact. I, I'm 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 that kind of person. You know, so anyway. Let's go to questions. Let's go to some comments. Hopefully we can be ended with the questions on that. We'll just drop the whole CEO conversation and steer us into eBay going forward. We got fourth quarter here right now. For me, uh, sales-wise have been very good. I have not a single promoted listing going. Uh, again, not to bring that. I'm just saying that just so you see that my sales are straight sales. I have a, another What Sold on eBay video coming up. It'll probably be up tomorrow. Um... For those in Patreon, I put two 30-plus minute videos up last night, and I got another 30-minute video that just went up today. I've got you guys for Patreon another video as well with the haul um, detailed video on, on multiple different items. So it's not going to be one specific topic. It's going to be multiple topics across there for that. So anyway, just to let you know. Well, Regina, a.k.a. Moondog Pickers, well, thank you very kindly for the $5 super chat. I really appreciate that. I sincerely do. Thank you very kindly. 
Again, I, I, it's, it is a lot of work, so I do appreciate all the support. Is that another one from you, Donatella? I, I appreciate that very kindly. Um, again, I haven't done, I don't do many cross-channel things at all. Um, the only two that I really do much with are Dom and Chris. Dom, uh, primetime treasure hunter, um, he's like um, he's like me. He, he's a real good person, and um, I, I almost talk to him every single day of the week, honestly. And some days I talk to him multiple, multiple times. I am drawn to people that are family-oriented, that, that see uh, facts as opposed to, um, you know, tests that don't do anything. If I do a test... I have a baseline or something to compare it to. I don't just survey a bunch of people and there's my answer to a test. You you have to have facts and you have to have something to compare it to. Like here all the time, I'm doing great with promoted listings, I hear people tell me. That's fine. You may do great. I, I didn't. That's fine. But the problem is you, you, you may have sold all those items whether you promoted them or not. That's that's my say. And I, I used to do test runs in, in one store versus the other with the same item to see and you know I can tell you that there isn't any difference from what I sell so I, it's just not worth it. it 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 cut cut time off sometimes if I did a promoted listing and I ran the tests and it's just it got me nowhere so I, again that's that's with that thank you again uh, Donatella I really appreciate that and it, Pat D's well thank you Pat uh, Pat D's does have a channel I have watched some of his videos um, he does uh, I saw him on a tricycle I think if I'm not mistaken on one of yours um, He's a funny guy, you know, he's just like everybody else. He's just a normal person. So, Pat, thank you very kindly for that. Yeah, honestly, the negativity I'm done with. What bothered me was that people from the other channel were telling me they wished my kids died. And I'm sorry, but that's just terrible to say that. You know, I hope your wife gets hit by a car and things like that are just awful things to tell somebody. I would never in my wildest dreams, no matter what was said, say something about that. You know, especially since my child does have a heart condition that... You know, he was at the doctor today. He's missed three days of school again. This is his fourth time out of school this year, and school just started. So, you know, we, we value our family, and for those of you who know, I value my dog uh, very well. We have two dogs. If you want to see, see um, Jinx, my dog, I posted a picture of her sedated um, uh, this morning, actually. Uh, she's doing good. We we took her in today at 1130. Her, her eye works um, works still, but they can't tell us how much vision she may have lost from it. If you don't know, my uh, I just got to bed the other day. Um, it was like 12.45 in, in the morning. I just got to bed. I was actually finishing up a, a Patreon video at the time, and about one, my son comes screaming into the room, my oldest, uh, Tim, he, he sleeps with the dog, and said, you got to come. He was all frantic and panicking, and her eyeball was literally out of its socket, and it was just probably the most saddest worst thing I've seen with an animal of mine it was just it was just awful and so then from there it was trying to find a vet and we ended up flying down the road taking the, the drive out there and it was just it was awful it, I felt so terrible and the wife was all upset I'll give you a warning about stuff like that we we feed all these birds and squirrels in the air talked about it forever well sometimes there was hundreds of birds in our yard it's a fairly large yard it's all fenced in and stuff so cats can't get in but the feces from all those birds causes a toxicity that can harm animals. And my dog so close to the ground that um, she was highly susceptible. We were just going to take her in on Thursday. We actually used the same appointment we already had for the checkup from the the vet MD. So, um, you know, that was literally told to us from both of those. So now we've got to have the whole yard germicided. We had to, you know, shop back the yard of seed and everything else to, to cut down and all that stuff. So, no more bird feeding or anything like that for us, unfortunately, because we had flocks of just the awesomest birds in our yard, and it was just an awesome sight. But dog comes first, and, uh, you know, who would have thought, you know, it's a lesson learned. That's our mistake. I messed up, the, you know, uh, you know, it's just what we did. We had big posts with feeders and out there. Again, we love animals. You know, my wife feeds squirrels in our yard and raccoons and possums. And this is in the city area. We're, we're not too far from the airport, so not really the city, I should say. For most people, this would be the sticks, in all honesty. But for me, I like the smaller areas. So, another one. Again, thank you, Pat. Uh, if you haven't checked out Pat, Pat is a good guy. I've talked to him on the side as well. Frank Z, well, well thank you very kindly. 
who's your average customer and what are they buying habits? Thank you, excellent information. Let me get a drink because I've been talking to people all day long. I've been up since six and I haven't stopped moving at all. From one appointment to my son's appointment to workers to talking to an antique mall for possible a meet up and some video footage there for you guys. Who is my average customer? Um, I sell, I'll give you a range of them. A large number, and give me just a second, Frank. I'm going to pop back because it looks like Meredithy is here too. Uh, Meredithy, thank you very kindly as well. I'm trying to give you the information that you need. I do honestly appreciate the super chat. I'm going to hop back to Frank in just a second here, but Meredithy has been on a lot of the videos. She follows on a lot of the other channels, and she knows Dom and everybody else as well too. So uh, Chris, um, Thrift Shop Hustler is another one that I deal with too and do stuff with. Um, good guy. He had a uh, scheduling issue, so he was on live with with a, another channel. No problems at all. We were, we talked beforehand. So Chris is a good guy. I like Chris, too. Trust me. He works for the Cancer Society. He's doing a lot of good to help fight cancer. So if you didn't know that, check him out, too. He does sell for the Cancer Society and does handle their entire um, reselling uh, business there. So just FYI, Chris is a good guy. Dom's a great guy, too, but Facts is facts, and I'm not gonna not gonna cover them up. And and to me, the issue was a huge issue, and it still is. So you know, just put it out there. It's it's a big issue to me because I'm an IT guy, and that means a big difference to me. They lied to me on the phone as well. Even up to the day after they posted and said yes, it does it. I called help desk, still telling everybody then. I know they're telling people different things now, but that's what they were telling me even after they admitted it on my post. So uh, that's the issues that I had with it. Let me hop back to Frank here. And again, Meredithy, thank you very, very kindly. I do honestly and sincerely appreciate that. I think you guys know I'm, I'm a pretty legit guy on that. Average customers. I have a large chunk of customers that are crafters that buy some of my items, paper items. They'll do something with them, and then they'll sell the items on Etsy. I know this because I've talked to many of them, and I've even talked to them on my Etsy account too. So just FYI, I, it goes both ways. Um... So that's one group of my, my customers. Another group of my customers are college university professors. I sell a lot of stuff to several different universities. I don't want to mention any names because I don't want I don't know what the rules are. I'm not trying to promote any any other college or anything like that. But a large group of my audience or, or purchasers comes from colleges. Do at least my higher dollar stuff. Um, I and there's also people that write books for the collectibles that I sell, and they do buy from me too. And I, I, again, I don't want to call out names, but the person who writes the books on Victorian trade cards is one of my customers. So, you know, uh, just FYI. And uh, people that write other books have bought from me as well too. I'm writing a book as well as a guide for my Patreon. I've been uh, pushing it aside for like four days. So I will be back to my, my record guide as well too. But those are groups of my, my buyers as well now too. Probably... 10, 15 percent of, of my paper buyers are people that have the same last name or are family members of some of the vintage items that I sell. That is a given across the board all the time. I, I always see that as as a standardized practice for people that are buying from me. Last name. And I always look at that. In 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 fact, I look at it so much that I have a tally sheet that I mark it down when somebody states that as, as an, a reason. Or if I see that the last name is the same last name as the person buying for me. I look at that because if I see something else with those same last names in it, I put those up ahead first. So those are other ones. I, I have a lot of people that buy that are uh, city and state historical society members. And they'll buy them for the historical society. I've sold stuff to... Um, like uh, museums, like literally like, you know, the Rock and Roll Museum and things along that line before. Um, I've sold things, uh, collectibles to other museums. Um, there's an Air Force Museum I sold a leather uh, flight jacket to from the 30s. It's things like that. I've also sold some of the vintage items, believe it or not, to Hollywood because they'll use them in mass produce like labels and things like that for scenes or props in movies and stuff like that. There's a Dr. Pepper... Um, four-sided dump bin that's you can see it in like three different shows and I sold it to them and I asked them if they could please inform me on what they were going to be in and they showed me and sure enough it's in those shows. I'm not going to call it what they are because I'm not going to be speaking out of turn or anything like that I'm not trying to brag that I sold something to anybody it's just some of the places that I've sold to as well so those are a large chunk of them I also sell to like stamp collectors that's that collect uh, there's there's philatelic societies and there's um, collector fields for like um, expos. Those are those are those are a big chunk, Frank, of of the people that I sell to. 
a large chunk of them. Uh, Christmas collectibles, obviously, there's there's Christmas specific people, and and it turns out like one of the guys that buys the most Christmas items from me is working on a Christmas book. Some of the items I'm sure that I sold will be in there. It's it's not a big thrill because I'm not going to hunt down and, and think about it after the fact. I've sold them. I loved the item, and off they went to somebody for a better purpose. One thing I can say. Uh, a difference between me and a lot of the other YouTubers, and this isn't a criticism at all. I'm not trying to call anybody out. I would do, I would have these items here whether I made money on them or not, whether they were worth anything or not. I know a lot of people just think of this as income. They wouldn't have 400 T-shirts in their 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 basement to sell if they weren't um, worth money. Now, for me, I'd still have 400 comic books in my house or 400 figures in my house, even if I wasn't trying to sell them. So. For me, this is my blood. This is what I do and have done since I was like, I, I've been collecting everything you can think of here and there since I was seven. So no lie. This is it. My father, I got a lot of his stuff when, you know, he was still alive. And, you know, I, I've just never, uh, I, I'm not a pack rat. I am a collector because I, I carefully take care of the stuff that we have. Marky, when when things are settled down, um, she'll be back on the show. She's just been very upset with a lot of stuff going on. So no offense to anybody else. She says hi to everybody. She's going to be having her own video on this channel. It's not going to be a new channel. You're going to get to see probably my son, one of my sons will be on here. My oldest isn't big on doing the videos, so no offense to anybody else like that. But Marky's going to do a video. We're going to have, we're going to put something together on Weebles, and you're going to see a massive collection of what she has in Weebles. I buy her Weebles. She gets those for Christmas from me. She gets them for her birthday, or I'll just surprise her one day. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that we do. I don't. I, I'm a big kid. My wife's a big kid. There's nothing wrong at my age collecting anything you want. Who cares if somebody thinks you shouldn't buy toys or comics or whatever else? I love it. I like it. Don't care. It's it's my thing. You know, that's why I say I'm not like most people, and it's not like I'm trying to be different. This is I've always been like this. You know, I was always an outsider in, in high school and, you know, picked on and all that kind of stuff because back in the day, nerds weren't cool. People with glasses weren't cool, and I don't know how many times I heard four eyes spoken. I have contacts in, so no hiding it. If you watch couple of my art videos you'll see me in glasses if you really want to um, because I, I can't see close-up details with contacts but anything else I'm fine with I, I think I look off with glasses so I just don't wear them very often you know I, I guess it brings back you know high school days of being picked on for being uh, wearing glasses so again I'm not trying to veer off the subject I'm just who I am buying habits um, I can judge as well Frank on many issues. Um, I know when I need to get my craft items up for Christmas and Halloween and Easter stuff. You know, you, you can't sell Christmas craft items um, in November for the most part. You have to have them sold way before that. Because if somebody buys like die cuts or um, baby doll pieces or whatever I happen to be selling, a lot of Victorian items, they're going to have to do something with them. You're going to have shipping time. You're going to have their production time to make whatever they're making out of these. And, and I swear to you that a lot of people will do this. And for the other channel, I will have that other video coming up here soon. Just everything just keeps being put off because of all these other things going on. So I have a Christmas one, so you kind of get to see. And I'm going to use some of the items. Well, I've already used them. It's already shot. But I'll use some of the items in that video that, that I sell and that other people buy. So you'll get to see what some of my customers buy for me to make because I can do the same thing. And and it's they haven't told me this. I already knew this ahead of time. I look into what I sell. I know why people would buy what I sell because if you don't know why somebody would buy what you would sell, then you're kind of missing the whole point. You need to know the market that you are going to be reaching with the item you are selling. So if I buy you know, um, a specific postcard, you need to look into the market, like Tahoe, for example. I know it's a big money area. A lot of people have moved there. It's it's high dollar. So if you buy something Tahoe, you know kind of what the type of people are collecting it. They're they're Californians for the most part. They, if somebody's buying Santa die cuts, you know, they're a specific breed of people. If they're buying angel heads with wings, which is a thing, you can look it up. I have some in my store. Chances are they are making angel Christmas ornaments, uh, reproductions of Victorian ones. They might buy a uh, Victorian angel head for eight or nine bucks. They'll mount it onto their own construction, and then they'll sell that mounted reproduction Victorian trade item or trade ornament for one twenty-five. So that's where where a large chunk of it goes. You have to know when to put it up, though, to 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 get the bang for your buck. 
You, I can't be putting up a lot of these items, you know, five weeks out from Christmas or even eight weeks out because you got four days shipping time. You might have their prep time. They may only be able to do the crafts that they that they they're buying for me on the weekends because they work full time and this is their extra money. These are all things you need to know. I also have a large group of people that buy religious items from me. So I, I do a lot of religious stuff, whether it be Victorian, where, whether it be tied to saint items or anything along that line too. So that, that's a consideration when you're, when, are, when, you're, when, you're, when you're figuring out what to sell and what to buy to sell. I know where the markets are with what I sell because I, I've, we failed a lot and we knew what didn't work and what did work. So I've been through the trenches with that aspect of it, and, and I've learned where I can get cheap items, which obviously you can see I get cheap items. And and, and people say you're not you're you're paying way more. You're you're being fake on the, the the numbers. I don't care what they say. It doesn't matter. Those people who are finding what I find or go to the the places that I tell you to, you see how cheap the items are. And I know that number is steadily increased of those of you who go to the same places that I do because I get people telling me uh, I don't think an hour goes by where somebody doesn't tag me. Uh, text me, message me on Instagram, Facebook, um, Patreon, or even on here about something they just found or they would have never thought about it. So I, I know my information is good, and I knew that from the start because I'm making my information work for myself. You know, I don't give you everything, and there's a lot I don't don't give out because I just can't do that. It would be I'd be shooting myself in the foot by doing something like that. So, you know, habits habits are routine. Like I I keep track. And Frank, here's another one for you, another tidbit on that. If you want to know when to do this stuff, write it down on, on a calendar and mark it year by year. I've got eight years of data full time of me doing this full time on specifically what week should I have had this up? What week did the sales pick up in crafts? What week did they pick up in Christmas items, Halloween items, Easter items, even Fourth of July items will sell at certain times of years. And once you get a happy customer in some of these fields, like with the niches that we sell in, I sell a lot of strange stuff. They know where to get them at because I've got tens of thousands of them. In, in like the store you, you guys get to see, there's, I may, be, I may be off because I haven't looked at it since with all this going on. I'm a week behind in my own data. I mean, I know my sales figures, but I don't remember the exact, my counts on active listings, but it's probably 26,000. That's maybe, Oh, geez, I, I don't even want to guess. I've got several million at this point, probably, total items we, we've been trying to estimate. We originally thought 200,000, 300,000 items of back stock. It, it's, it's, it's horrendously huge. Um, so if I put everything up, I could flood the market as well with that same thing. But all this, this stuff that I got, I know what to buy. I know what's going to happen with it. And the stuff that I do buy, too, I know where the market goes with it because it's, I've got years of data. You know, like if you're you're buying like a specific brand of a shirt or something, they, they come and go. The collectibles don't go, like comic books. Comic books have been collected and the prices have just steadily increased since I was a kid, since the 70s. So are they going anywhere? No, now it's turned into people investing, investors buying um, uh, graded and slabbed items. So that's another round that, that you got to look at too. So, you know, there, there's... Excuse me, my dog's whining and I'm paranoid. I, I hate to cut off. I'll be right back. Sorry, folks. She's the wife's sleeping right now we've been up somebody's been with her and my my other son had to go and my youngest son's in the bathroom sorry but this is jinx I, I don't know how well it's visible but her right eye was outside of the socket so um she's been to the doctor a lot and we i literally spent the the whole night as well as my uh, oldest son at the uh, vet med or med vets um, in here in toledo so um this is my baby girl i, I this is i love the hell out of this dog so Anyway, she was whining, and I just wanted to make sure we're paranoid. Every time we hear her making any noise, I'm worried that... Um, and you can probably see her eye on the right blinks a lot more, too. Um, and it doesn't move quite the same as the other eye, or, or as it used to. So let me put her back down. Go on, girl. Um, but anyway... Um, Go on. 
Come on, go see my turn. Yeah, she hasn't left my side much, and as soon as Marjo, my, my youngest son, moved, she was crying for daddy. Uh, sorry about that. Paranoid on my dog. Um, so um, once you know the buying habits, and again, how to know the buying habits, you want to sit there and keep track of this stuff. Mark them year by year. Keep a sheet. Excel. If you use Excel or, I guess, Google Docs, you could use... Go on. I'm sorry. I don't want to be distracted by my dog. Um, but uh, I mark this stuff down so I can track year by year what month, what day, what week everything went up. So if you do an average from eight years, your end result is going to be very, very good and very accurate on what times you get this stuff up. So I follow those habits. I follow the habits of you know, when these people are buying it. And that's like 100% key to, to getting this to work. If I'm listing them too late... They can't make the crafts or, or buy them for the purposes they're doing to make decorations or whatever they're doing. So they're going to buy from somebody else. And they may not come back to you the second year if you're not putting them at the right time. They know they can just go to the other person. They've, they've got their game and play. And they can just get them all from you, you know, straight off the bat. Or them, I should say, not you. So I play the markets. I reach out to the folks when, when they have questions. I pay a lot of attention to the questions. Um, if it's somebody who's, who's contacted me before... I will always answer theirs first because they're repeat customers as well. It's not saying I'm snubbing anybody, but priority to the ones that buy more from you um, for the most part. Uh, I know some people may say that's 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 you want to take care of everybody. I take care of everybody, but I'll answer one a few moments before the other one to get their stuff out there real quick. Take care of your steady customers. So that's that's just another thing. Hopefully that touched on that, Frank, there. Let's go down to some more questions. Thank you very kindly for that $10 super chat too there, Frank. Hang on, let's see if I can get my screen clear because it's not clearing. There we go. Well, let's go back to some other questions. I know I have one here. Uh, no problem, Tess. Welcome, Treasure Experts. Jan Zap, um, how do you base your starting bid on some of these good treasures you find without losing your original cost? Are you talking? You talking about my opening, like um, my uh, starting price on something? My start, my my cost on an item is like a dollar or less, so there's really no worry in my my behalf on losing anything, um, because everything I sell sells for decent money. You know, four or five bucks is decent when you only pay a quarter or something for something. So, you know, I, I don't ta I don't tank on anything. I I honestly, and this isn't a brag, I can't tell you when the last time I lost in a, on an item. I mean, literally across the board. What happens with what I buy? I'll buy it. Hundreds of stuff. If you go back and watch the last flea market haul, and you'll see I bought like 200 items for $236. One item alone, I'll get all my money back. And so I could almost give the rest of the stuff away or just not even sell it and not worry about it because I made my profit off of one item. So I don't have the concerns on, you know, the pricing. I set my own prices and everything. I don't care if it's twice, three times what everybody else does. I still sell it. Because again, and I've said this, I don't know how many times, People don't look up re or research prices on vintage items to buy. If they're looking to buy something, they'll see it. They're window shoppers. Everybody who's looking in vintage and collectibles is a window shopper, in my, my opinion, or my, my eyes. So they see something they like. They're not going to go into comps, look up comps. They're not going to tear a peak. They're going to say, is that a good price to me? If it is and they want it, they're going to buy it. They don't care. I shouldn't say they don't care, but they just don't realize they should go and look up the prices. Fine. That's fine with me because I can price them higher. A lot of people also will look at comps and say, oh, a whole bunch sold at $10. I'm going to put mine at $10. Well, you, you just missed the whole point. Just because everybody else sold it at $10 doesn't mean it's worth $20. You know, I do this all the time because a lot of people, when you're looking at prices, you, you, you guesstimate by what other people put them up. The first person put it up at $10. It sold as a bin. We're just using an example here. Second person saw it put up for ten dollars. He might put it up for fourteen fifty or fifteen or sixteen dollars. Somebody offers ten, it just sold for ten. Third person sees two that sold for ten and thinks that's what they're going to go for. And again, ten dollars nine ninety nine, whatever. He wants a quick sale, so boom, he puts it up ten. Now you've got three comp sales that went for ten dollars. Now I'm going to come in there and put thirty four fifty on that, and I might sell it at thirty four fifty. It happens all. It happens all the time. So. That's just what I look at it. I don't worry if, if a bunch of people... Now, if it's, say, 50 people all have it the same price, that might be a different consideration. But I sell niche markets, so the niche markets, there's not as many people selling these. So I judge by what their prices were on it, whether it was a bin, 
um, and where their starting price was. Now, like if it was a a bin and it was really high and they just settled for whatever, that that's a different story. You have to look at the overall aspect of what you're looking at. I know this is just going to be instinct after a while. You're going to have to you're going to have to do this for a little while. Rule of thumb on my book is I'm cheap on everything. I pay as little as I can. I go to the last day of a, a of a flea market, my flea market video. That was four hours before they closed on the last day. And I got that stuff, which you see on the last day. Exactly what happened. Um, in fact, the my Patreons who I met there will, will back that up on what time that was. It was closing in like four hours or something. That, maybe not even that. It might have been one. And I think they closed at four. So it was the last three hours of it. And they were open since nine, if that gives you any idea, I think. So, you know, you, you got to think about that. I go, I don't, I'm not going to fight for anything anymore. I didn't even need to go to that flea market to do anything. Um, and let me address one more question. Somebody asked, why didn't I just buy all of those maps? I'm not greedy. There, if you watch the video, and several people asked me that. I would have bought all the maps. That's fine if you want to do that. That's that's you know that's your own thing. I no no criticisms towards you, but with those maps, there was a lady up there that was already interested in them, and I'm I always ask. I say this all the time. Just ask. I asked before somebody else did. You know, I don't mind saying whose is this, even if they're talking to somebody. This is business. I'm not I'm not there to be you know, a friend to everybody, but this is business. So I asked whose it was to, to know who to talk to while she was talking to somebody. She was polite. I was trying to be polite. We left in ex extremely good terms. So, you know, we were joking around in the whole work. So that's just the thought on that. I don't I don't have to have it. I left the rest of it for the other lady. She did go back from the way it looks to, to buy some of them too. I didn't need to get it. I only went there to, to meet somebody who I buy from religiously, one of my pickers who does stuff for me. So... The only reason I even went there, and I figured me and my son would go out and have a little fun and, and do stuff. We got lunch on the way back and stuff like that, too. So anyway, um, I don't have to have everything. I'm not greedy. I don't buy everything sitting on a table, even if it might be worth money. I'll buy a few of them. One of them we're keeping anyway. My wife's going to keep the Mississippi one. I've been debating on keeping the U.S. map for myself um, because nowadays I, I don't. The money isn't really as much an issue as it used to be, and before I'd have to have sold it. Nowadays I don't have to. I might frame it and put it in my office along with the wife's one. Just opinions. I love the early maps. I love, I love the fact that they're hand watercolored. So anyway, I know that's a little bit of a rambling answer, but I, I pay so little. I, even like the maps, for example, ten bucks. You look those. Look them up yourself. You do, go to Terapeak and look up what an 1875 hand watercolored map just an average one goes for you know you might see people giving them away for 20 or 30 bucks but i don't do that i'll let them run and i'll list them on other sites too you can sell those let's say on etsy you can sell them on an amazon for sure in the collectibles historical section so and on amazon i'll probably get more for them now i haven't put any maps up my personal self on amazon yet but they sure as heck are going up and i've talked to people who've sold things like that on there and they do sell incredibly well from what i have been told again that's not my first hand knowledge though so Anyway, uh, where are we at? Thank you as well for, for the comments on the videos too, Jan Zap. Hey, Rich, how are you doing? How are you doing there? Things are going in the right direction. Um, my mother-in-law is not technically in the hospital. She is at a, she's a physical, I don't know, uh, I don't know what you'd want to call it. It's not necessarily um, a nursing home. Uh, they, they give um, physical therapy there and stuff like that, so... Anyway, I'm not going to get too much into my mother-in-law issues. Um, we love her to death, so that's all I can say. Uh, let's go here. Hey, Penny, how are you doing? Hustle and Grind Calgary, welcome, welcome back. Teresa, how are you doing as well? Indiana, I have been there not too long ago. Mongoloid, welcome. Laurel Ewing, how are you doing? From Ohio, what parts of Ohio are you from? Hey, Carl, how are you doing? There's another video up there too, Carl, if you haven't seen it. PJ Miller, welcome. Now, Shia, how are you doing? Candy Cat, good name there. Hey, Mike, how's Mike doing there? Mike's a good guy, too. He has a nice store with a bunch of radio supplies. Uh, vacuum tubes and stuff, too. Hey, Pamela, how are you doing? Lori Disney, what an interesting name. I worked at Disney for a while. I actually met Walter Elias Disney's uh, daughter. Um, she, I can't remember her name. Matter once I met, and then I met um, Roy E. Disney Jr.'s son. I think it was at a um, thing they did for cast members. It was like a Christmas party. Metal flipping uh, Mel, how are you doing? We do mess with metal as well. 
Carl, oh, from sunny Florida. Actually glad it's gone. Me too, same thing. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too, Carl. I believe it's basically that. It's a business decision, um, and he was steering it in the wrong direction. Again, they may not change the course. If they don't, I'll be... I'll be back on the list of I'm worried about them. They're they're going in the wrong direction. Look at their financials. They were uh, they were projecting a negative number for fourth quarter. Who projects a negative number for fourth quarter? So anyway, look it up yourself. Go up and look at the, the numbers. And Carolina picks thanks again. David, how are you doing? BJ Sims, welcome. Nancy Leora, hopefully I pronounced that right. Another Ohioan. Hang on, my feed just locked up. Okay, it's all locked up. I am totally frozen on my screen. Oh, there we go. Now it's free. Yeah, it's been a lot of technical issues lately. Let me switch down here. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Oh, hang on just a second here. My feed, when it disappears, I have to follow and follow all over the place. Yeah, I think I can't even get to some of these now. I think it's totally locked up there. Hey, Craig. Craig Lanchart Pickers there. Check him out, too. He was just on Dom's channel, too, and they had some technical issues. I took uh, SQL, too. I see somebody talking about the database. I took SQL in college, and then we touched on some of it else, too. Um, I learned SQL from scratch with literally typing in code lines, and then we actually created the database from, from typing, not from anything else. We didn't import anything. It was all done from scratch. Moki Girl, welcome. I I'm sorry if I missed you on here, anybody, because my feed just totally went haywire and I can't even get back up anymore. Chris Napier, welcome, welcome. Simply Casey, welcome. Uh, again, I have missed some. Bob Grant, Bob's World, welcome. Again, I'm not sure where we're at in here. I know I didn't answer a bunch of these when they were going on, so I do apologize for that. I wanted to get my information on there because I got bombarded because of all this from tons of people, and I just wanted to spit that out there. Again, the, my video was posted on e-commerce bites, and I'm not, I'm not upset with them about it, but it caused a lot of grief for me and my wife, and a lot of people saying some really nasty things about my wife, my kids, all because of another channel, and that's that's irresponsible and unprofessional in my book, and it was really offensive. My wife was worried with everything else going on. It was not the right time for somebody to attack me in that way with my mother-in-law in the hospital and stuff like that too. So anyway, I'm not trying for no retaliation. I don't want anything from anybody else whatsoever. Never asked for it, never wanted it. Don't don't agree with it. So don't don't attack anybody else. Who cares what somebody else they're allowed their opinion. Um, but I don't attack or or even re try and remotely mention somebody until they've brought my hate on my my family, my wife, my kids. So anyway. Uh, let me see here where we at. Mira, how are you doing? Yeah, I don't know anything about Poland stores. I would never recommend anybody dropping off eBay. I've said that many, many times. I will not give up eBay unless they give up on me. That's the only way I'm not going to be on the platform. We've just broadcast our stuff out to many other platforms and sites. If you're in Patreon, I'm looking into the the um, paper uh, other one with hips. So just you guys know what I'm talking about. I'll have that this weekend, hopefully. So you'll have a couple more sites we can cross this together on as well. Yeah, I don't know anything about store people dropping stores. I'm not dropping a store. I have no intention on doing that. I'm just not going to use promoted listings. That's that's the end of my promoted listings. I won't trust it anymore because that suggested number is not. It can't be. It's not right. There's, it's it's not a number. It's not a fact. So I, I don't buy it at all. eBay managed payments working good so far. Yeah, they're working. I I've, I've been using my other store, but with all this happening, I meant to switch them over, and I still haven't done it on my new store. I know they were down because I saw it on e-commerce bites. I followed e-commerce bites for like two years so uh still processing they need to fix that yeah ebay labels were down in my end i had to go to classic labels and then it booted me out and then the when i went to print through classic labels the price wasn't the same as it was when i was in the uh newer label system so the bulk shipping which was really weird i didn't end up calling because i just ended up figuring it out and then it's printing from a, a secondary site you can print from PayPal if your labels won't print on eBay, just FYI. And you can print from, uh, I don't use pirate ship because I don't pay for shipping. Everybody pays for their own shipping. Whoever buys from me pays for their shipping. So I don't worry about pirate ship. I give them the, the cheapest price I can for um, 
Hang on just a second. I'm sorry. We, we do have family stuff going on, so I don't want any messages missed. Okay. Sorry about that. So um, I'm totally lost my train of thought. If you have capital managed payments, isn't bad. Yeah, th that's Chris has got a, a good point on it. Chris, um, you'll have to wait for your payments on that. That's the only thing I can say. If you're new to it, I, I would recommend you waiting um, until you get some better cash flow coming in. That would be my honest, sincere opinion on managed payments. For me, I could care less when it comes in. We leave, sometimes we'll have, you know, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in PayPal before we do a transfer. I usually do it at the end of the month. It's just what I do. I used to do it all the time quick because I, I was worried about it, but, you know, I, I don't do it that much, uh, as much as I probably should, but... And some of the other payment systems we have, too, I, I don't transfer them automatically. Most of my steer nowadays, though, directly to a, a separate uh, purchasing bank account. Just, you know, you can have multiple bank accounts. Um, get yourself an EIN number. If you don't have an EIN number and you're just starting out, get yourself an EIN number. Take that down to the bank and you can get a business account. Most banks will give you a business account for free. You know, with, with a decent rate to start off with. And, and I've got several and one bank and a couple more and another one, all business accounts. I need some for my accountant because they do take payments out of your bank account. I know I've had people say they shouldn't do that, but everybody does that. I don't know who doesn't do that nowadays. It's all direct payments for everything. You know, and I, I've got holds and things. They can't go over a certain amount at the bank. So if it hits a certain amount, it's going to shut them down. So you can do that, set that up with your bank too. There'll be a limit that they can do at any given time. So... You know, a lot of people don't know about that kind of stuff, but I dig into everything because I don't I don't trust anybody else with my money or my business. I want to know it. Obviously, the wife knows everything that goes on and stuff, but, you know, you, you, you don't trust even a bank. And I'm not saying banks are crooked. I'm just saying they make mistakes. So if you don't know what's going on and they make a mistake, you're not going to be able to catch it. So that's just a gist. If you haven't hit the like button, I know I'm terrible on even calling out stuff like that, but hit the like button for me. We got... Heading up almost to 200 people here and 89 likes. It does help the channel and does push us out a little bit. The the live videos just don't get the same uh, respect from YouTube as, you know, a regular video, just FYI. So let's go down to some more questions here. Uh, let's see what time we got. I don't want to. Yeah, I'll go longer because I wasted some time. I was going to do it a little shorter, and I know I always say that, but we'll go a little, a little longer here. Chris did have a good point on capital. My great find for you. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Again, if I didn't, Mary Beth G, welcome as well. Arizona. Got friends in Phoenix. Yet I've been on the phone with people all day long. I got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, some of it will be up here soon. Um, I, I I had to put off again on the other channel too, but um, I talked to Ed. We got that rolling. I may have a little interview on how we got into it and, and what it takes to be a jeweler and stuff for you coming out on there too. Um, this channel, I'll be going to a coin shop, and we're going to be showing you what to look for in some coins from the biggest coin dealer around here. Um, I'll, I'm going to be into an antique mall, and we're going to talk to some antique dealers and some huge malls to kind of give you an idea on stuff like that. Um, on this channel, of course, um, art stuff on the other channel, but um, it just takes a little time to get things rolling, so just FYI. Uh, where are we at? Ryan, there was nothing wrong with PayPal. It never should have been spun off. Yeah, that was a money decision. PayPal would have kept eBay running up to steam. If, if PayPal was still with eBay, eBay wouldn't be having these issues, in my personal and honest opinion. I know the thinking because I read, I remember when they split off. We made a lot of money um, originally when that happened. But um, the, the point is there was, a, there was some philosophy behind it. I, I'm not going to say if it was good or bad. I did read the story on it as well. There's actually a little book on it as well. It's an e-book on Amazon about it. I don't remember the title, but I'm sure if you type in PayPal story, you'll find it. Um, but there, there's a whole thing on why they did that and stuff. And it has to do with like assets and things along that line from what I understand. I don't have any any problem with PayPal. I do have a problem with them keeping our fees on a return, though. I don't think that should be just. There should just be a one-time a quarter or something processing fee for it. If they keep that, I wouldn't have a problem. I understand that because they did do, at least it muddied up their system. It's something else they have to track. So I know people say, well, they didn't really have anything to deal with it. There, There is some some stuff they have to deal with it. And that those numbers are included in their figures and it might have to be something they have to report to the FCC or um, the Federal Trade Commission or something like that. So I don't know the whole aspect on their reporting level because I've never handled that high of a value in reporting. I've only handled numbers for a regional, which did like 11 million. So I don't know anything over that. I'm totally lost on the big numbers after that. Oh, where am I at? 
I'm not sure what the single dad and the wife didn't pass. Uh, let me see. Hey, Gary Russell, the whole promoted thing is already old. Maybe we'll solve this ASAP. Yeah, I'm not worried about the promoted listing. I'm done with it. I'm, I've already moved on. We've already restructured, and I didn't really have to have them anyway. Niche markets, I wouldn't recommend using them at all, honestly, because you're going to be on the first page no matter what. The only thing it might have done is put you on a different page that is related to the area that you're... Hang on. All it would do is put you in a page possibly that was related. So you might get a little boost, but it's not nothing in my book. I can boost and just push out offers to watchers. We're going to talk about uh, multi-purchases too in another video. I'm going to show you some other ways that eBay has added in that many of you may have missed. Below the promoted listings, another option you can do. And believe it or not, that does work. I do sell multiple items to the same person religiously, constantly, all the time. So, Oh, sorry. I've been talking so much my mouth is dry. Eighth with horrible sales day. Depends on what you sell. I don't know your store, so it's kind of hard to, to judge on stuff like that. Most people's sales tanked in September, at least depending on what you sell, I should say. There's a lot of people selling new items that didn't tank. So I've heard probably more that did tank than didn't. But again, I talk to more people that sell similar items to me, so I can't judge on the overall aspect. I know in my areas, the 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 some of them did tank on certain days. Again, a lot of people were using promoted. I had... 15, 20,000 with, you know, 1% promoted just for the heck of it. Because, you know, the money wasn't an issue. It wasn't a huge ordeal and difference. It's just like basically a, it's a wash with my top rated plus discount. 1% one, 1 to 1%. I mean, I didn't lose and I didn't gain from it. That's just all I could say. And I totally cut it all off. We already called out to Pat. Donatella again. Thank you both. Now, I, Chris is saying if you, Chris Nepier, if you don't use promoted listings, your sales tank. Uh, I've got tons, maybe a hundred or more, on just a, between several videos that they turned off promoted listings and their sales went up through the roof. You know, one by one by one. And just look at the videos. You know, you can see it yourself. You know, this isn't something you can't check on me. Go and watch, check on some of the, the posts under my videos if you question that. And I get tons of people. People sent me their sales numbers, they sent me their store sales tracking sheets that, that says how much they did day by day to to my email so you know i've seen other people's you know many that had dropped and many that didn't so and the correlations seem to be ones in niche markets dropped the ones not in niche markets did not so you know and, it, and there's more to what's going on as i said let's let's just get off promoted listings i want to go to a better ground not to snub the conversation oh where are we at here Hey, Annie. How are you doing, Annie? Hope you're doing well. Haven't been to upstate New York in a while, but we are going to Niagara Falls. So, How are you doing, Hotman on McCrary? He's getting more and faster. More views, more offers. Is that copies of my eBay listings? It's not me or my items. It's eBay. I will agree with you on many of that aspect there because I've looked into it. You know, they change the structure. It's not that they, they're they suppressing your organic. They change the entire structure of how that system works from what I see. They they tried to rearrange. They did, they did too much at the same time. They tried to rearrange what shows up on a search result to supposedly give a better um, representation of what you were searching for. And I think there's some glitches in it. It's not worked out. You know, again, I'm not saying they did anything intentionally in that. But in my book, what I personally see with the IT background is that there might be something that's pulling wrong numbers to some categories because there's not enough information for it to judge. That's my take on it. That's why the the sales that I see all tanked in niche markets, the ones that weren't in niche markets, didn't seem to tank because to, to get a basis on what you should pull up and what you should show, you have to have a big group of information. This is just technology and this is how searches work in a database you have to have enough information for the artificial intelligence which which is what ebay actually has built into the system that's exactly what and this is part of the, the past ceo's idea was to build this in there that part i could say is pretty good whether he came up with the idea or not is, is here or there but it has to have a big enough grouping to decide on what to put it up there. So if you're selling in a niche, and again, this is my conjecture. This isn't factual. No one said this to me, but I, knowing how this stuff works and looking at sales sales numbers from 
stores that were having good sales and stores that were having bad sales. And again, they corresponded to the same days. So it's not like I'm coming up with apples to oranges. We're coming up to comparable size stores, to comparable size stores, to a exact same time frame, one on top of each other. So that's what I see it is. I see the changes that they possibly did. There's not enough of a a grouping to decide on what to put up for the buyer to see. Buyers are hating these these listings and all these promoted stuff popping up. That's why I took such a, a take in this. And if you don't know, go to eBay's own message board and type in um, turning off promoted listings or hate promoted listings, and you'll see hundreds of ways to turn them off. So that's what my thinking is, that there's so many people out there that hate them. But the take on it is that the structure of the whole entire promoted listings and listings in general changed at the same time. They should have bitten off one piece, made sure that rolled out fine in a beta test, come back in, and then done the second piece. Every time I've seen people push out stuff like this, even in places I personally have worked, it's come out badly at the end. You know, and the other thing that, that bugs people is that they, they didn't announce it after it was shown and they, they don't come out and say, hey, this is it and this is what we're going to do to fix it. That's what you do to show transparency and to show that you're worried about us as well. You know, a single mom buying off eBay isn't concerned about her, her financial well-being. She has the money to buy it. But a single mom out here who talks to me, who's crying, who can't pay her bills, and her sales tanked is a huge concern to me because, you know, I've been at the bottom of the rung with kids. You know, geez, me and my wife with, you know, no job, just barely making it. The kids are eating and we're eating, you know, nothing that, you know, basically almost nothing, no car, no, all this other stuff. I've been there. You know, it happens to everybody. It, it, one day you're rich, the next day you're not. You know, life goes that way. So, you know, don't take anything for granted, I should say, as well, too. Um, you know, that's my take on it. I look into everything because I, I cover myself. My foundation of my business is the platforms that I sell. And if those platforms have an issue, you know, I'm going to stumble because of their issues. You got to look at every base of it. That's why I look at financials. That's why I look at at market share for things. That's why I look at is something going to show up in a ranking? Is it killing my ranking on, on there? That's why I let my items run longer in in there. I don't end them after 28 days, so I am not paying for whatever whatever you're thinking on that. It doesn't work like that anymore. You know, if if you do that and all of a sudden you get another sale, it, it doesn't mean it came from you doing that. It just means somebody went and bought something. You have nothing to compare that 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 happening to. You can't. You don't have another one identical that didn't sell or did sell. I mean, there's no way to compare it. You don't know what really happened. It's conjecture. If you took that in a court of law, they would just laugh at you. It, it doesn't mean a thing. There's no. They don't correspond to each other. The you know the activities. There's no proof that one relates to the other and that one caused the other. Uh, let me hop down. Let's get to some more questions here. But Hopman is right from what I have seen because, again, it depends on what you sell. He sells what I do, so there's a lot of people in the niches. That's another point on my matter. So, anyway. Let me pop down. My feed just disappeared. Every time I go to slide down, my feed disappears. <laughs> Yeah, if you want an app to cross list, Ecom Dash and Cellbrite are, per, are two of the decent ones. They're the cheaper structure. Some of them charge you by total listings up. Don't go with a third party app that charges you by total amount of listings. Only go by the ones that are charging you for those items that you sell and give you unlimited amounts of listings. Those are the ones you want to go at if you're going for third party apps. I promise you, I looked into this for a long time. We're using a third-party app that only charges you by the amount of items listed. Or not listed, the amount of items that actually sell. The ones that they have to negate and pull off another site. Um, I have like three different uh, ways to, to cross-list certain things. It depends on where they're at. In, in my Patreon group, we went over and I showed people how to pull your items from eBay without doing anything, your, your postcards, straight to hit postcards. And right off the bat, Three people from doing that, following the directions and, and clicking a few easy things, got enough sales to pay for several months' worth of selling on hit postcards from the very first day they did it. And if you follow the trends on, on these other sites, you don't have anything to worry. So like when hit postcards, you sell one on there, it pulls it down from eBay. There's also other ways to do it. So like let's you can like I sell or use a third party app. So I can control my eBay listings through a third party app from that from from uh, eBay then, after I've controlled them from a third-party app, eBay uh, posts them on that on their page, right? So then the hit postcards or the other sites that I list on then sync up with eBay. So I can change everything on one platform and it affects everything that's linked together. 
So nowadays you can have multiple sites linked from multiple multiple different ways. You don't just have to have a third party app. Depends on what you sell and where you sell them at. I've looked into this and, and we're going to expand. I'm going to show my my Patreons another way to um, pull items from other sites too as soon as I get it all figured out. I'm going to test it all first so I don't want to give you bad information. I know those who did the the, the hit postcard pullover, you, you saw how easy that was. I was I was straight on with how, how quickly and easy you would have with that. And it, it, it works very, very well. You know, I have not had a single issue with that aspect of it all. So uh, let me see here. BG Sims. Um, I have been shown all day and for the last day or so, um, sponsored listings and the organic listings showing up. Now, my take on it is maybe they're trying to figure out what's going on and they're randomly ch checking things out, or maybe they put them back up. I don't have any sponsored to compare it to, and I'm not even worried about it anymore. They can do whatever they want with it. I'm just done dead with the topic to me. I, I don't see any point in it. Um, and I'm not the only one. There's there's one of the biggest um, YouTube resellers on here that doesn't touch promoted listings at all, never has, doesn't even do a store level. I'm not going to call it names, but I'm sure there's a few people who know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, let's see here. Hit the Nike button. Yeah, I got your correction there, Carolina Picks. Thanks. Uh, let's slide down here just a little bit more. Ooh, you're doing manual. Hoffman, check out Ecom Dash and check out Sellbright, as I said. It's not going to be, you're only going to pay by, there's levels too. And I think the cheapest one in Ecom Dash is 60 bucks for 500 sellings, 500 sold items. But you can have 20, 30, 40,000 listings cross listed through that app. And again, you're only paying by levels. So just look up the levels. Those are the only two I personally would recommend because I really dug into those two and I use one of them. Sellbright Ecom Dash. In fact, we're almost to the point where we might just switch over to Ecom Dash. Again, Sellbright would be great if you don't have as many items as we have up in so many different categories. For me, it's it's it has it's it has its drawbacks, but it's a good tool. There's no complaints about really. Yeah, and there's not a ton of work to do some of the cross listings. Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you, Mira, too. Uh again, where's my feed? Darn it. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing? Again, if you want to see my dog, too, she's they're sitting over here, too. Um, Instagram, I have a, a picture of her. She's she's adorable. I'm, I'm seriously adorable dog. I just, if you like small dogs, I love chihuahuas. I had a beagle as a kid, so I never thought I'd like a small dog. The wife got jinx without even really asking, which is fine. That's my wife, but uh, I love the dog. She's she's my dog. She'll come to me over anybody else, anytime, any, any place. She'll come to dad. Even if everybody in the world has treats, she still comes to me. Uh, let me see here. Where are we at? Well, thank you, Mary Beth, as well. Just Nike it. West Max Gare. Well, thank you. Steve Elmore, how are you doing? Josie, welcome as well. Thank you as well, Mary Dethy. Well, thank you, Gary. That's 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 touching in all honesty. Um, you know, I I just put out what I put out. I mean, I'm not trying to I like talking about it. You you can tell I like talking. It that's literally the the biggest reason I do this because it's my my way to get out what's inside my head, I guess you could say. I, again, I've got ADD and, and and OCD and stuff like that. I'm not trying to make that as an excuse, but I, I, I sometimes I, I fight with my own brain trying to get all this to do something with what's in my head. It's hard to get it all out sometimes. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just me. I don't know how to explain it, I guess. Hey, Lex. Yeah, Lex, Lex, proof, perfect point. Young people don't, don't generally buy collectibles. Now, there there's two exceptions to that. Well, probably three. Vintage toys are one exception and comic books. Th those are like the two top ones. Um, comic books, not so much as they used to be, but they're really taking a big hit, good hit, not a bad hit, um, just with all the movies that are coming out. The number one type of movies out right now are superhero movies, so that's been a big plus on that for my book. I don't watch, I don't care about any of the superhero movies anymore at all. They've went too far out, and they've turned uh, a field, 
I like Comic Con and Dragon Con and stuff like that. Nowadays, it's just they commercialized it by taking it over from you know corporate America. Good, bad, or indifferent. At least the good part about that is there's no such thing anymore as a nerd like when I was a kid. Kids aren't getting beat up for that reason, at least as much as they were when I was a kid. So that's a good plus. It went global, at least, so so more accepting of people and what they like. I don't care what anybody likes. Like what you want. You know, I'm not going to bother you. You don't bother me with it. And if you want to do something in your own behalf, that's fine. Who cares? Let everybody live and do their own thing, is what I say. Uh, I have three Captain Spaulding shirts, all the same. <laughs> okay. So you know what I mean, Carl. I literally went and bought two more of these, these Elvis shirts just because if one wears out, I love this shirt. Um, I get a lot of comments on it. And not not the reason I bought it. I love the shirt, you know. I want to just let me shoot out one more thing. I have, and I get it a lot, and I, I know people aren't trying to be offensive. I have eye issues, and um, I blink a lot sometimes. I cannot control it. So just FYI, uh, my, la my eyes are extremely sensitive. I, when they used to do the glaucoma test with the air, they could never do it. And even wind blowing my eyes, I've always had eye issues. My vision isn't the greatest in, in real life, and, and I, I carry loops and all kinds of things. So, again, I, I can't control it, and, I, and I'm just putting it out there um, just because I get people saying stuff about that all the time. I'm not offended. I got very thick skin. Otherwise, I wouldn't be on here. And there was a comment, love your shirt, so perfect example. Young people don't trust eBay. Too many years of bad rep. You hit the nail on the head. I told eBay that to their face. Again, I'm not trying to act like I'm some Superman. I went in there and told them what's going on. The, the one shook his head. You know, I knew they I knew they knew it. They know it. I mean, I know it. They know it. They're, I knew they knew. I think they didn't expect what they expected when I walked in, you know, into that chat because I know my stuff, you know, and I don't know it because, you know, I'm some Superman. I know it because I, I've got this the OCD and I, I can't let stuff go. I just I can't let I got to know what what the answer is to something. I'm I'm I wished I wasn't. I wished I didn't have that that thing because it bugs the heck out of me. It drives my wife nuts sometimes because sometimes if I if a technical issue on a computer and it's down, we got nine 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 laptops that we use for employees and stuff. And if one of them's down, I'm so aggravated sometimes that I'm up to like two or three in the morning until I get it running again just because that's the type of person I I can't let it go. It it bugs me. Because I know what it is, and I got to figure out what's the easiest way to get it fixed. I I fix everything in here myself. Yeah, Adam Savage does rock. I do love Adam Savage. Uh, I love the spacesuit aspect of too, and his creations. And you know, um, I'm on his. Um, I do the Maker's Fair things. I, I watch all that too. If you don't know what that is, type in Maker's Fair and stuff. They have one up here in Detroit, which I hope to get to next year. I'll do a video there, so you you'll get to see what people do and how they make money doing some stuff. You'd be you'd be shocked as heck to see. Gary in Daytona. Yeah, he gets Elon Musk too. I get him. I honestly, seriously get that guy. I, I, I fully understand where he's coming from. Um, and I'm not saying I'm like him or anything last night, but I, I think outside the box and everything. I think it's some weird stuff that people are like, you're crazy. And they don't laugh when they see something come of it. So, you know, everybody made fun of us when we did eBay years and years ago when we when we started way back then. And, you know, nobody laughs anymore. You know, nobody says a word about it. They don't even like to ask anymore. You know, just because, you know, they're stuck in a dead end job. And I'm not criticizing anybody, but, you know, I don't, I work 12, 14 hours a day, five, almost six days a week doing that. And then I work the seventh day, but it's not work to me. It, this is my blood. This is what I do. You know, I could spend, you know, two straight days, you know, 48 straight hours in an antique mall or flea market and be happy, you know, without sleeping because I'd be so wired at all the stuff I was looking at and finding that, you know, I was so into it. You know, my son and I have fun when we go out and do that. Or if the whole family goes. We go sometimes the whole family, too. Yeah, Elon Musk is the type of person that needs to be running eBay. That's that's the type of person. If eBay had somebody like Elon Musk, I would seriously think that they could challenge Amazon, you know, in my opinion. Somebody like him, though. You have to have some, not necessarily him, per se, but that's the mentality that, that eBay honestly and sincerely needs to, to pull themselves out of this. Because it, it, the rate it's going... I really hate to say it. One of the board members owns five percent. I could conceivably see in the next few years a buyout attempt, you know. And I, I'm not saying that would hurt it, you know, because they wouldn't deaden the platform, you know. Why would they cut off so much revenue? It just wouldn't make any sense. So, you know, I don't see eBay going anywhere, even if something like that does happen. Maybe it would be bought up by a tech company and improve it, you know. You don't want to kill something like that. It just doesn't make any sense to me, you know. Maybe a merger, but nothing, uh, nothing worse than that. 
Yeah, another door will open. Brent's saying there too. I believe that too. I'm not too worried. You know, I'm not worried about. I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on the financials and check them. You know, on a on at least a every other week uh, basis, just to see where it's heading. If fourth quarter this year doesn't look good for eBay and they report a loss, that would be a concern for me. So, again, that that's a concern. That is a concern. This is the first fourth quarter. I would say that there's this much competition out there, um, eating away at at eBay. Again, that's why I say you need a cross list. You, you you if your sales are plummeting and you don't know what else to do hit some of the sites up that you know somebody told me bonanza you could free uh import your listings um i looked at that a long time ago and back then it wasn't working very well any of the options they had so i don't know but if you don't want to go to a third party app there are some other places you can go and that will automatically sync your items without doing any of that extra stuff or buying a service it, it just depends on where you want to go and what you sell but uh, cross-listing is, is the biggest thing. We're now on 10 platforms. I, I make revenue on 10 different places on online platforms. It was nine. I am now on 10. So it's taken a little while. We'll have 11 hopefully next month when we hit our own store. So anyway. Uh, costs go up for sellers. This hurts everyone on the platform. Yes, Laura John, that is correct. Yeah, and what they were doing was not a long-term... The, the, the platform's old. The platform whole structure... You can only build up uh, an old cathedral. Let's take a, a church that was all gutted or something, a brick church. That's what eBay kind of is. You can only put so much new stuff into that framework, and the buildings still stand. That's that's how I would look at it. You can't you can't do that anymore like you could back in the past. You need to greatly increase it. Craigslist came well after eBay. eBay's been around for like 24 years. It used to be called something else. Yahoo Auctions was before eBay, though. Um, so anyway, and I was on Yahoo back in the day, too. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Let me try to get down some more questions. So I'm not trying to snub anybody. OMFUG, welcome. Now, if eBay sheared off their collectibles on a separate site, I think that would physically hurt them because then they would be competing on a platform basis like ruby lane and ruby lane they're, they're the, the cost to list on ruby lane are too expensive i could not afford to do ruby lane you need high-end dealers only that sell like big items to make something like that work and i say that only because now ebay would be fighting if they were going on their own without the other revenue would be fighting sites like etsy and now with amazon's building up the collectibles category eBay, if they wouldn't have split off and would have stayed with PayPal, would be up there as well, too, because PayPal would have forced them to invest more money into the structure. And what's happened after they sold PayPal? Now they're integrating a whole other system to cover up for the fact that they, they didn't keep PayPal to begin with. That's, that's the whole problem. PayPal could have integrated other payment systems into its own system if they wanted to. Had they been connected, I think that would have been... Uh, a deciding factor on where where eBay sits. Again, eBay is here. PayPal is off the screen way up here. So numbers, look them up yourself if you doubt that. Again, I, I follow Wall Street Journal religiously at least four days a week, and I do read Forbes religiously as well, too. Those are the top two you want to read in my book, in my world. The people I talk to, those are the ones I'm going to quote. If I quote you some other figures, they're going to come from... MIT is a big one that I follow a lot, too. Um, uh, stuff like that. You know, Boston Dynamics I love, too, but... I love the robots. Studio one, two, three, one. Yeah, this is me. You're not going to see me changing. I don't really care about the, the other stuff on it. Again, I've turned down every single sponsor that has ever hit me up. Every single one. And this is free money. I've turned down equipment. I've turned down... In fact, there's a page when you hit 10,000, you go on and just sign up for all these sponsors that'll pay you money, whether you do anything and just announce their stuff on the show. I won't do that because I don't use this stuff and I'm not going to promote anything I don't use. If I don't like the product, I'm not going to promote it. I don't care about the money uh, to it because I, I, I want you to respect that I am me and I'm not going to sell out to something like that. I do have a Patreon page, and I do get paid by people when they, they sign up for it. And I only offer you content, though. It's the same thing, but but different, better content, more insider stuff here. I can't give everything to everybody in the world and expect you know to, to sustain it, so... Yeah, um, S. Butler there. Um, call it what you will. They they were they were putting out in that conversation. They were making statements and stuff. And again, nothing wrong with what they did. I'm not saying eBay did a single thing wrong in any of that conversation or anything else, other than they should have had an IT guy. They didn't want the IT guy to talk to me. I guarantee it. 
Uh, you know, and, and I think they were surprised I had an IT degree and a master's and I, I worked in corporate America handling multi-million dollar areas. So I know I'm on the level with the guys that I talked to. I wasn't below them. You know, they weren't they weren't able to talk down to me. And I knew more about some of the topics like the, the ranking on Google than they did, which was sad. I, I honestly sad that the person didn't have the answer and was asking, well, what does it matter why you rank on, on Google? They didn't understand why that mattered. That is a problem in my personal opinion. That's why at the end of the conversation they asked, did I feel comfortable about it? And did you want to go forward using a promoted listing? I said, I think I feel worse now than before I sat down in here, you know, which is true. So anyway, they, were, they did nothing wrong in the conversation. I'm not criticizing eBay for doing anything wrong. They were protecting their interests, which is what you and I should do too. If you're not protecting your own interests, you're doing something wrong. But I treat people fair, just like going back to the flea market video. I didn't buy all those maps because I wanted to be... be what I would expect somebody else to do. I would hate if I was waiting on somebody to ask hey, those master sales, somebody else comes in and buys them all. That would be a little offensive to me because I was trying to be polite. So anyway, back to that. I'm not a, I'm not a greedy person. I pass on stuff all the time and let other people have it because I don't really care. I don't need to, I don't have a concern. I don't need inventory in all honesty. You know, those maps will be, you won't see those maps listed probably for two or three months if that tells you anything. So um, I'm in no hurry to sell them. I'm in no hurry to sell anything I get really anymore these days. I, we start... I set up and stage what we're going to sell a week. That's what we sell. If I get something else new, 99.9% .9 of the time it doesn't go up until we've got the schedule. I have a 90-day plan. I've talked about it before. I run that 90-day plan left and right, and I've always ran it and always worked for me. I don't rush to sell anything. Some of the Christmas stuff I might be putting up sooner, but that's part of what we do. Do I ever mess with cassette tapes? 100%. 100%, Carl. Do them all the time. It depends. The best ones are AOR album oriented rock those are the best ones type in aor either in the album set or in the record section or in the cassette section you'll see exactly what i'm talking about they're usually local bands um garage bands and things like that and i get far more money for cassette tapes on those than anything else um, i'm not going to give i was almost gave out something that i talk about in patreon but there's other areas that are very good in cassettes aor though is is what you want um private press ones that have like the cover of the cassette is just a piece of paper with colored pen or something on it. Those are the ones that are going to be worth the most money. Best ones are um, heavy metal local bands from the 80s. That's that's where it's at right now if you want cassette tapes. Um, there are some Beatles and things like that that you'll make a few bucks on. There are some of the metal versions of the cassette tapes. Not heavy metal, but the, the, the type of tape that are an extremely high quality tape, almost studio quality. Those go for some good money too. Um, there's some classical, there's some imports by uh, DGG, the, the German company, Deutsches uh, Gramophone, um, but those are the ones that you want to look for when you're out there for cassette tapes. That's what I make all the money on in cassette tapes. Picked up a ton of for nothing, an average $5 a piece plus shipping. Good to go on that as well. I don't mind selling, um, I have a bottom line these days though, um, in the past we, we, we had it down to like 5 to seven ninety nine. Nowadays I try not to list anything less than seven ninety nine at the bottom end um, but we're really shooting to buy stuff for 9.99 or less or i mean for for more 99 or more and i know a lot of people say you want a higher price item they're usually a one-off business that's just them doing it or maybe they've got them and their wife or, or husband doing it i've got multiple employees so you know an employee can list 30 items an hour depending on what kind of items are paper items 30 items an hour is, is a no-brainer they can do that easily You've got three photos. You've got the zoom in, then you've got a front and back, a full shot of the item. And from there, it, it takes seconds. You know, we've got high speed everything. We've got the biggest package of internet. So it's just boom, 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 boom. And they're just, all they do is change the title, the price, and the photos in a condition usually. It, it takes moments. So my guys list about 30 an hour. The good ones, obviously, once, once they catch up to speed, it takes a little while, but about 30 an hour on average. So it, you're talking eight dollars times thirty. That they're getting two forty up an hour if I'm doing seven ninety nine items. So it, it's no big deal, you know. They sell one or two items. Well, two items will give me my money back from their hour, or one for a higher dollar. Usually, when an employee works here, before they walk out the door, I've sold. <clears throat> excuse me. Let me get a drink here. Before an employee walks out the door, usually I've sold something that covers their whole shift. Or at least within that day for the most part. Usually it's before they leave. Because i got a lot of people that follow and watch me because they collect the items that I sell. And that's the area that they only deal in. So that's why it works for, for me anyway. 
If I list something, you know, there's a certain percentage, three to five percent almost always sells that exact same day it goes up. And I, I think literally religiously, that's what we do on those. I list 100 items, three to five of those sell. Day one, before the night's over. <clears throat> Cassette tapes are hit or miss too, so you just got to be careful on those. I hate clothing. I hate it. I'm not a big sports person. Don't do that. Don't go into video games. I don't mess with tickets. I don't do drop shipping. Nothing wrong with drop shipping if that's what you want to do. I don't do it. I do wholesale, RA, and um, collectibles and stuff like that. RA on eBay, RA on Amazon. You can do RA on other platforms too. Uh, we're on Walmart too, just FYI. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think Dom had um, one of his, I think his daughter had something going on tonight. I see somebody talking about Dom, primetime treasure hunter. He's a good guy, a really good guy. If, if I had to say the number one trustworthy, I don't want to say Chris isn't trustworthy at all. Chris is right up there on the list, but I just talked to Dom a lot more. Chris works a heck of a lot of hours, and he's doing a good cause for the American Cancer Society. So I would never, ever want anybody dogging on Chris at all because Chris is a good guy. He's a family man and the whole works. Dom, I just talked to a lot more, and we, we both like the same stuff toys, comics, and stuff like that. Um, we send each other texts and stuff. We had a big conversation on uh, uh, old-time wrestlers, you know, Roddy Roddy Piper and, you know, JYD, Junkyard Dog, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Macho Man. I always liked uh, the Slim Jim commercials. My my youngest has a Macho Man Randy Savage shirt that he wears all the time. So um, one of my friends, his dad, he, in fact, he was my best man. His dad was the Reverend Ronnie Z um, in, in the Tri-State uh, Wrestling. And I used to go to some of the matches and stuff. It was it's a riot, you know. Anyway. Chicken fried steak, welcome. I'm always watching your videos and telling my husband about them and making him listen when we are posting on eBay. Well, don't make him listen. If he wants to listen, that's fine. Um, nobody has to watch or listen to me. Ryan, if you want to know my store, just go to one of my What's Sold on eBay videos and you can see them across all of those because I pull it straight from my my uh, store. You'll see my items in the whole works. So I don't really type out the names so much, but uh, you can just go to one of the videos, any one of them. Just two minutes in, fast forward if you don't want to see the whole thing. Uh, let's see here. But don't force your spouse there, Regina. Nobody has to watch anything. Uh, let me see where we are. Let's slide down here. Let's see what time it is. I know I'm bad on talking too much. We'll go for just a few. Hang on just a second. Another family post. Okay. Hang on just a second here. Let's get to a few more, and then we'll have to cut it off, unfortunately. Maria, I love your weird and the whole reason I watch you. Yeah, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I, I take flack for that, but I don't really care. This is me. I'm not going to be fake for money. You know, I, again, I could have taken a lot of money. I could have went on a lot of channels, or I could have had a lot of people on my channel... A lot of people get their, their viewers and get their sub count up by going on another channel and hoping the people from that other channel will subscribe to your channel. It, it's there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. I haven't had to do that. I don't do that very rarely. Um, Scott and some of the other people I really enjoy too, but I, we don't, I don't have time. He doesn't have time. His wife has issues and, and stuff. And, and, you know, Scott's an awesome guy. So bearded picker, if you know, if you know who I'm talking about, all those guys over there are too. Um, Sue's great. Um, John, all those people over there too. Steve, the whole works. So, you know, no criticism towards anybody. RV, um, uh, my brain said, I can't think of the other person I was going to call out. Um, it's somebody I follow too. Sorry. Yeah, promoted listings have one up, and I say that because there's going to be less of them available and more people using them. And again, trending rates have steadily increased. People are sending me now their, um, like, three months ago uh, expenses for listing versus theirs now, and they're, you know, five, six, eight, ten uh, percent higher than they used to be. So, and of course, they've been rolling out the, the procedure, the, the option to more people. So, the more that have it, the more it's going to go up. And the more they limit how many are available, the more it's going to go up. So, you know, it's just the way it works. They're going to hit a point where everybody's using promoted listings and it's going to be not usable, you know, because if everybody uses the same thing, how can it be better or special? You know, the next step then becomes pay-per-click. You know, it's the only other way to, imp to, to get more money out of a system that's flooded by everybody promoting things. That's my take on it. it. It leads to a race to the bottom, you know, just like on Amazon. And we talked about it in the beginning, if you want to go back and watch that part.
Um, Carolina Picks, I'll touch on that too. Um, managed payments, you it takes a few days. Um, the people that are complaining are the ones that, and it's not that's not a it's a it's a valid complaint for their business. <clears throat> if you go from excuse me, <clears throat> go from PayPal where you can get your money instantly um, with your card as well. You can just use your card or charge whatever you want to do. Or we just usually use a bank transfer and just whenever it goes in, it usually takes one business day. I could care less. I don't need any of it now. I don't need it next week or next month. This all goes into another account, all the payments that come in, um, just because I've got multiple sources of revenues. I'm not like, I'm at a different level than than, than many folks. And again, I'm not trying to criticize or, or be bragger or anything like that. It's just just the fact. I, I can't I can't do anything about that. I don't I don't I don't have the same concerns on money. For me, if it doesn't show up till next month, I could care less. Um, in places where I've worked, you've, you've got a 30 day turnaround. So let's say I'm traveling for a company. I shout a thousand or 2000 bucks. I did this as a regional manager. I paid my trips and, um, sometimes they'd give a rental car if they had something set up, but I paid them up front out of my pocket. And then the next month they reimbursed you. So that's how a lot of corporate America works. You know, you shot up front as an expense, and then you are reimbursed for the expense at the end of the day. And sometimes you get a, a kicker for, you know, lost, um, like, uh, interest or something along the line. It just depends on who you work for on that. Um, but but if, if you need the money now, don't do managed payments. If you need the money to ship your items, don't do managed payments. That, that's my take on it. And there's nothing wrong with managed payments. I honestly would say, you'd, depending on what you sell, you could possibly see a decent increase from people who don't like PayPal. It's not that they can't use it. They just don't like it. A lot of people hate pay PayPal because of issues they, they did 8, 10 years ago or when they first started off. And they had some major issues, mind you. I remember the when PayPal first started. Josie, well, thank you on that. Yeah, Patreon videos are like... She says... Um, he or she, I'm sorry. I'm not sure which member. I've got so many names that float by. I don't want to offend anybody. Um, it's a thousand percent deeper in depth content on Patreon. I don't know if it's that much, but it's it's my thoughts on the items more so than just what sells for what, I guess, is the difference. It's just video. I don't promise you or guarantee you anything, but if you watch and my video's here, you know you make money off of it. You know, these are just areas that just most people don't or just don't know. I know them because I've done them since I was a kid, you know, and it's not like I'm genius or anything. I've just done them for my whole life. We've been full-time selling just what you see me talking about for eight years full-time and then before that as well, too. So, you know, I talk about what I know. I don't talk about stuff. You'll never catch me doing a, a shirt video to make money. If somebody else has a hot pair of shoes to buy, you won't see me talking about or anything else. Just my items. That's all I worry about because I love what I sell. I would do it whether I made money off of them or not. I wouldn't sell them. I just have a pack rat and historical items. I'd probably write a book with whatever I had. That's what I'd probably do. You know, I'm not going to change or take any sponsor or anything like that. I don't really care. And it's it's not money for me. I don't care about that money. I know people say that, but I don't dress flashy. I don't, you don't see any jewelry on it. I don't have an iPhone because I don't like Apple and I don't care. I'm not worried about the name. Nothing against you if you have an iPhone. I've had one once before and I don't, it wasn't any different than the phone I use. I only use a phone for, um, for, um, research and stuff while I'm out. If you if you chat with me on there, you'll know I'm terrible on typing on the phone. I'm always typing and my autocorrect's terrible and I haven't even worried about it. I'm not a big typer. I mean, I can type great on a computer, but not on the phone. My thumbs are too big. So, you know, I wished I had bigger th or uh, smaller thumbs or bigger phone, but I would hate to have a bigger phone in my pocket. I hate those big phones just because I'm just there for pricing. Are you a collector? I can't say everything that I stated. Again, part of that was, was my opinion, but 90% of the, what I stated on what's going on with eBay came from Wall Street Journal's four or five uh, articles and Forbes. Read them yourself. They'll reiterate what I said, and I think word for word, a couple of the statements I made. The rest will, will just be saying exactly what I said, but you know, using their own words as I did. Uh, let's see here. I know I didn't get very far in this, this week's here. I'm sorry. Well, thank you, Charlie. Yeah, YouTube can be nasty when people do things that they shouldn't, but I try to follow the rules, and I don't call people out because it's just not me. Again, if some other YouTuber wants an opinion, that's fine. I mean, I sometimes I post on somebody else's pages if I, I honestly sincerely feel and know that the information they're posting is bad advice to some other people, but I, I don't like to even do that. But um, I've been dogged by so many people that, you know, I kind of, you know, i, I got to be careful. Let's just put it that way. Let me move down here. 
Let me get to just one or two more questions. Again, I'm Chris Who. Chris is thrift shop hustler, and again, he does work for the American Cancer Society, so he does a world of good for for society in general. So, yeah, Chris is a good good guy. Thanks, Carl. Thanks for calling out too. Yeah, I know. I like when Dom's on because I'm more. I'm so focused on the business aspect of when I'm here by myself. When Dom's there, we can kind of make it a little more light. Um, anyway, uh, let me see here. Michelle with one L. I'm a writer too. Yeah, I've got a novel, honestly, that that I've been working, and I got a whole chapter done, and and I've. I've had awesome reviews on it. I'm. My wife says it's like Hunter S. Thompson, and I never read Hunter S. Thompson. I bought her the books, but I've never read a single piece of Hunter S. Thompson. But she says it's just like Hunter S. Thompson. So now I do like Fear and Loathing in um, in uh, Las Vegas. That's that's a really good movie, and uh, I get it. Johnny Depp. My I used to like Johnny Depp until he his head went out of his body, but. Um, He's a good actor, though, I have to say. He's done some bad movies, but um, that's one of his better movies, I have to say. Yeah, let me pop down. Let's just get one more question. I know I'm running real long today. Uh, let me see here. There's Dom right there. Hey, Dom, how are you doing? Yeah, Duncan, you probably are, believe it or not, because it's a small world in those fields of paper, believe it or not. There's the, the man I'm talking about, Dom. Did I miss you, Miss Mimi? I see Dom talking about you. There you are. Hey, Miss Mimi, how are you doing? I have showed a potato head the other day one of the original ones from like the 60s those go for some decent money let me get down to another question hang on just a second yeah sales are up on my side too i've got sinuses again it's probably because of the birds now that we found that out it's gonna take a week or so to get rid of it yeah, Duncan, again, um, people come back for paper. If somebody's buying something from me, they chances are collect it uh, for the most part. Like I said, some of the, the people who are my customers, I discussed that earlier. Go back and watch that part if you want to get the gist on it, on why people come back for paper over and over again. Keeping track of when to put up holiday is very smart. I want to start tracking when big rummage. And I said that as well. We have a, a calendar of everything. It says when every church sale is, and I said this a year and a half ago. So um, most I haven't heard anybody say that till after I said. It. I'm not trying to take claim for it, but most other YouTubers on here, I've never ever heard somebody say it until I started talking about it. I have a list and have had a list since God knows when of every church sale, every community rummage sale, everything. If there's a place that has a sale religiously all the time, I've got it on my calendar and it flags me when something's coming up a week in advance so I know what's going on. If something else new comes up, I flag it. I've got little color uh, uh, check marks I can put next to it so I know, is it good? Is it bad? Do they have antiques? Do they have vintage? Is it just clothing? Avoid, don't avoid. Check this one every other month. All that kind of stuff is on that sheet. The same thing comes off that sheet. So when my calendar pops up with a notice, it tells me, hey, I should list this item in this type of time frame. This sale's coming up in two days. This sale's coming up in three days. Start working this inventory over to the other side to photograph. All that kind of stuff comes into play. You can't do that if you don't keep track of your stuff. you got to keep track of what sales come in at one time. Every company in the real world, every brick-and-mortar store does this. Every restaurant, every retail, every chain that's a national chain does just what I stated. That's the reason I do it, because I did it everywhere else I worked. 20 years in restaurant management and retail. 20 years in running restaurants as regional and general manager, you have to do that. They track it by the hour in those places. So on a Friday night, the busiest, the two busiest nights uh, of the, the week are Friday and Saturday. Most of a restaurant sale comes in on a weekend. So Friday night, Saturday morning, you'll have a little bit of rush. Starting at 3 to 4 on Saturday afternoon, it takes off. Sunday morning, you have the big church rush on Sundays. This is at every restaurant. This is almost in every retail as well. 
Sunday afternoon, it slows down. It's steady. Sunday evening, it's dead. And then the rest of the week's just a slow triple to the weekend. You make 60%, 70%, 80% of your sales, depending on the type of business it is, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So this is something every store in the country knows and keeps track of. So if at 4 o'clock your sales are only, say, 12000 for that day on a Saturday, and it will give Applebee's. So at 12000 on Saturday, I need to be making that by 4 o'clock. If I'm not, I need to figure out what's going on and dig into the information. If if an hour later at 5, they're picking up, you know, I can I can breathe again. That's that's how that works in a restaurant. That's how you should work it in your own store. I know if you're not huge or big, it may seem, you know, pointless if you got a few hundred items up. But if you're thinking of it that way, you're only thinking about your day-by-day -day basis. You're not looking ahead on what's coming down the road next year. Do you plan on being a seller for, for more than just this year? If the answer is yes, treat yourself like a seller. Turn it into a full-fledged, you know, professional corporate-style business where you're tracking this stuff and you're going to know what you're doing with your numbers. Come next year, you're going to say, well, I'm still not that big. And you're not going to have last year's numbers. You know, you're already breaking the chain. So... It's a hard habit to break, but if you start off doing that, you know, and your plans are to succeed, you've got that drive and the vision, start from day one like it, like you're making a million dollars. Day one, think of yourself, I'm going to make a million dollars, I better start doing all this stuff. You're going to have the dime if you're just starting off because, you know, in the evenings, everything's not opened. If you're only doing this, source in the daytime, list when you get home, and then do your extra stuff and research at night. It's going to be a 12-hour day, Monday through Friday is what you should be looking at. If you're starting off right, you know, again, this isn't easy. So don't don't watch a couple videos of mine or anybody else's and say, well, boy, he does it. I'm going to make a fortune in just a few hours. I work every single day of the week. Usually I try to stick my Sunday to artwork only. So I've been doing videos. I got a whole bunch of videos finished for my other channel. Um, they're not going up quite yet because I want to do some promos and I'm going to a few places. I got a glass blower you're going to see and stuff like that. We're going to get to see up close instead of sitting back on stuff like that because I love that stuff. Me and the wife go on our own time. So, you know, set yourself up right and start from the beginning. Don't don't think of it as, oh, I'm not going to make it yet or I'm not making enough money. You're thinking about, you're almost like defeating your, yourself before you got there. Start it off like you're full-fledged. If you really seriously want to make this as a living, you want the freedom that I have or anybody else who does what I do has, treat it from day one as you're a millionaire and you're going to make that much money and, and take it all that professional-wise. I don't care if you got two or 300 items up. Keep track of where you're buying the stuff from. Keep track of where you make the most money from. You know, a lot of people don't even realize, and I've told them this, they put it on a chart. And people have done this because of recommendations by me. They put it on a chart, and then they realize, well, heck, I'm going over there wasting my time, and I only find two or three items at the same store, but I'm still driving out of the way to go there because I always keep thinking I'm going to find something. They never do. And then, you know, after 10, 12 trips, they realize, well, geez, you know, what's going on? They would have known that, you know, only three or four trips in that, out of four trips, I found nothing or two items. But yet a thrift store over here, you know, I can get stuff every time I go and a bunch of stuff. You know, they're they're taking time away from the one that always gives them stuff to go to ones that don't always give them stuff. You know, that, that comes down to proper sourcing. Keep yourself a chart. Make a calendar. Make a, a stack of, of papers or something if you have to write it down and you don't have a, the money to buy a, a um, app or something. I use Office. Uh, Microsoft Office. I, I know it by heart. I know everything about Microsoft Office. I've used it in the corporate world. I have a Lou in my life. Lou showed me how to use Excel. And from there, I've just taken off. I know every single little aspect of Excel. I've got three versions of it, and I, I use all of that stuff. I love Excel. It, it's, it's a tool for you to use. I don't use eBay's calculating tools on anything. I don't use their analyticals. I don't use any of that. I don't care what the sell-through rate is. I don't care any of that eBay's sell-through percentages or whether you're up or down is only based on your top two selling categories. It even states that. I sell in multiple categories. I sell in multiple stores. So I don't care what one store is up or down in certain categories because I might get something different and it could totally change where I'm selling at more items in, in a week's time or month's time. So those numbers aren't always going to sink. So keep track of this stuff yourself. Not only will you, you have the information, but you'll be more knowledgeable about your own business Treat it as you're, you're a business guru, and it's your business, and you're going to take it seriously. Know where every dime in your business goes. Track that as well, too, and you'll do far better than just randomly going week to week to week to week. Don't look at it week to week. You know, even if you're living paycheck to paycheck with the eBay money, look ahead. You know, your money aspect is one thing, but the business is another. That's personal finances versus business finance. Look at it as the business finance aspect, the business side of it. 
Treat it as a business. You're the only person there for your one-man show, and you've got to do that all yourself. You know, I, I see people, and I, I've talked to people, and people ask me help on this and that. you got to take it, take it more seriously and step up a notch in my book. Again, you may take it a different way. I don't live paycheck to paycheck, and I don't live you know, week to week. I, I live and look at a year in advance, two years in advance. I already got plans. I have a five-year plan. I've got a five-year goal at this point, too. We we hit our goal already, and I had to make another goal. You know, I'm going to hit this goal, and I'm going to have to make another goal. Already be looking ahead at what you're doing. And again, take it as a motivation. Take it as whatever you want, but that's how I personally look at it as. So anyway, let's kind of cut it off there. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to everybody's questions. I just wanted to address some of the other comments, concerns I had, because I got flooded after um, E-Commerce Bytes published my, uh, put that, after. I had nothing to do with them putting it in there. It was sent to me by somebody else. I have no knowledge on how it got there. I would have rather not had the 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 publicity and honesty. I'm not a person like that. You don't see me on other channels and stuff other than Dom's or Chris's or something. But anyway, I appreciate everybody coming on. If you didn't hit that like button yet, just please hit that like button. It, it does help us getting some more traffic to here, and it does show uh, YouTube that the channel is liked. It's a good plus for me. So anyway, I do appreciate everybody coming on. Um, the wife hopefully will be back uh, on, on the next show here. She does. Uh, we are putting together a, a video of just her in it with um, her toys and her things. I'm going to be shooting up, and, and you're going to see my bottle collection, and we're going to talk about bottles here on this channel. And then I'll have a secondary video on uh, Patreon talking a little more in depth on those same categories too. So anyway, that's what I have for you today, and hopefully you enjoyed it. One more time, hit that like button if you hadn't, and I do appreciate everybody coming on. Thank you.